bespoke radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Well, well, well. Good evening. Fade to Black. Bespoke radio for the masses. How you doing? Today is Tuesday. September 13th. Wow. 13 is always weird, isn't it? Rolls off the tongue. 257 days into the new year. Just 109 days left. Yeah, man. We're in the middle of September. It's here. Start planning that New Year's Eve party right now. It's kind of weird, huh? Halloween comes and then boom. Christmas, boom. Right? Right? We are live from a bunker somewhere in downtown Burbank, California, and I would like to welcome everybody, everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States, hither and tither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black. (laughs) Mike Barrett just tweeted in, Eric gets it. (laughs) Mike Barrett. Stirring up that pitcher of Kool-Aid for everybody. He's the best. I will never, ever, ever, ever knock Mike Barra. For KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the planet, I am your oh-so-humble host, Jimmy Church. How you doing, everybody? I'm in a great mood. It rained last night here in Southern California, so I got to wake up, you know, to wet streets and... You know, the dust gets knocked off of everything and we're clean for another, you know, I don't know. I don't know. A couple of weeks. Hopefully, uh, you know, everything here just gets dusty so quick and, and dirty and because it never rains in Southern California. It just doesn't rain. It, it does not rain. More on the attributes, 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 <laughs> attributes of California here in just a minute or the lack of them. I'll get to that in just a second. Tonight's a very special show. Been looking forward to this for uh, a while now. And I know I say that um, all too often. But the shows here at Fade to Black, uh, every single one of them is an event. Every single one. Every one is planned out. We put so much effort into it. We never phone it in. Um, And that's why I'm able to say, you know, I mean, tonight, very special guest and tonight, the best show ever tonight, tonight, because that's what we do. Okay. We work really, really hard at this. Tonight is going to be one of those shows. Tonight we have author Sid Rice is with us. I'm introducing Sid to the world tonight. Uh, I'm just, it's an honor for me to be that guy to do this for you. Um, An amazing man. A uh, talented man, but he's somebody that runs under the radar. He does, and, and trust me, to get him on the show was twist. He doesn't care, right? Uh, well, I, he does. I, that's being a little bit too cavalier. But it, it, this is being on shows like this and and doing things like this. That's not his goal in life. It's not. But I have uh, two of his volumes here of many. Listen to this. That's two books. <laughs> each one weighs 10 pounds each. And we're going to discuss. I have uh, two of the volumes. I have three. Uh, I have two here in the bunker. And 
and Rita stole another one. She's got it down the hall. And uh, I have these here. We're going to discuss this tonight. We're going to discuss history. We're going to discuss lost history. We're going to discuss his work, Legacy of the Ages, and uh, a couple of other surprises tonight, too, as well. But it is History 101 tonight, and we are going to go through it. You know I'm a great lover of history. That's what I do. I study it. Why? It's easier than math. <laughs> That's why. Um, in school, math, no. I could not wait to get through Algebra 2 so I never had to do another math problem for the rest of my life, right? Or uh, was it Algebra 2 or Geometry? Whatever the last math class was, like my sophomore year, that's all I wanted to do was get math over with because I didn't care. Um, history, world history, United States, uh, old, new, whatever, current event. That was my thing in school. Um, and English, too, as well, of course, artwork. But um, history, I could not get enough of it. I could not wait to get to a government class. I couldn't wait to get to a history class. I just couldn't. And that's what we're going to do tonight. So this is History 101, Sid Rice style, with a little uh, uh, Jimmy thrown on top for some salt and pepper. It's going to be good stuff. Tomorrow night, right here on Fade to Black. I know you don't believe this right now. But tomorrow night, Chuck Zukowski and author Ben Mesrich are going to be here. Ben Mesrich, uh, Chuck Zukowski, one of the best researchers out there. Uh, was on last year about the 37th Parallel, a mind-blowing show. Ben Mesrich discovered Chuck. Ben is one of the most uh, seriously sought-after and successful authors on the planet, and he wrote a book about Chuck called The 37th Parallel. So, yes, we have author Ben Mesrich here tomorrow night and uh, Chuck Zukowski. And we're going to be discussing the new book, The 37th Parallel, and a couple of things that are in on the horizon here in Hollywood with Chuck and Ben. And it's going to be a great show, so you're not going to want to miss that. Thursday night, of course, is another Fader Night with John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom, followed by open lines all night long. Call in number is 323-825-5045. We will open up the phone lines tonight. I'm excited and would love for somebody to come in and uh, ask the right history questions tonight. Let's have some fun. Follow us on Twitter at J Church Radio. It's what you want to do. J Church Radio. Hashtag F2B is the sandbox. Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com is the email. Any questions on tonight's show, as always, is hashtag F2BQ in Twitter. All right. Yes, it's coming down. Uh, let's see. Today's Tuesday. So we have, uh, let's, this is the way that my mind works. Let's take today out of it. So let's go Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We have three days left because in four days, Saturday, David Ike is going to be right here in Los Angeles. There's still time left to get your tickets to the Los Angeles show. We are going to be down there in force. I think that tally right now, we've got like uh, 20 fader knots that are going to be there, plus the staff here at uh, Fade to Black. And uh, there you go. So you want to come down and hang out with all of us in Irvine. Just go and click on the banner right now, jimmychurchradio.com. Get your tickets now. I cannot wait. The show is a 12-hour presentation, 10 a.m. in the morning until 10 p.m. at night on Saturday. 12 hours of David bleeping Ike. Come and hang out with us. It. It's going to be great. And then right after that, he's going to be in San Francisco on the 24th up at the Craneway Pavilion. You can get your tickets for that, too, as well. Uh, talking to uh, uh, some of my friends up in San Francisco that I was trying to talk into coming down here. We have some. Uh, there's going to be some great familiar faces, too up at the San Francisco show. So either way it goes. But if you want to come hang out with us and the Fade to Black team and all the Fader Knots, come on down to Irvine. We're going to be there all day and night, Saturday the 17th, this coming Saturday. All right. Uh, let's see. Where am I? Life Change Tea. Uh, I got my new package in the mail today. 
it's always good when you get a life change tea package in the mail. And you can get yours right now. Go over to jimmychurchradio.com. Click on the banner right there, life change tea. It's the green banner. Get over to getthetea.com. Use the promo code Jimmy, J-I-M-M-Y. Either online or over the phone. When you order, you will get free shipping. That's how you do it here. That's how we keep the show running. Support our sponsors like Studio Dome and their Fade or Not Special and their true wireless stereo technology right now. Two SB B2 speakers in a hard show case, 129 bucks. Click on the banner over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Use the promo code JCRTWS when you order. You will also get sh- free shipping. That's $129 all in for a portable, wireless, high-fidelity stereo system. End of story. Got a really cool cable in there that, that charges two USB devices at the same time. That right there is worth 129 bucks. Let's get this show cracking. Man, you guys are on the Hillary. You guys are really on the Hillary bashing thing. And look, I have no problems bashing Hillary. Too easy. Way too easy. It's, you know, it's not as easy as Trump, but it's probably as fun. And uh, have you seen these pictures of uh, Trump uh, with uh, without his hairpiece? <laughs> have you guys seen those? Oh man! All right, let's get this show cut. Car- I wonder if has anybody seen Hillary without her hairpiece? I wonder what that looks like. Ooh, it's Barra, but cool. Yeah, Bear. Oh, uh, okay. Barra is officially in the sandbox. Everybody. Stuart, <laughs> Stuart, come and hang out in the sandbox. It's Stu. Let's get this show caught rocking. Happy birthday to the one and only Dave Mustaine. 55 years old. Dave Mustaine. I got an email the other day. Dude, man, peace sells rocked, man. What do you mean it was just okay? <laughs> I was like, wow, people really listen to what I say. Yeah, P. Sells was good. Dave Mustaine can't sing, can't really play guitar, but he's got a rocking band. Dave Mustaine today is 55 years old. I'm just messing with you, Dave. Fiona Apple today is 39. Probably the most successful artist that could sing out of tune. Uh, Joe Don Rooney today is 41. Joe Don Rooney is badass. Joe Don Rooney is the lead guitar ist for Rascal Flats. And I loves me some Rascal Flats. Don't even go there. Do not go there. Because Rascal Flats is the Van Halen of country music. And if you don't believe that, go and watch a Rascal Flats video, right? And just imagine for a second what is just going on. Let your imagination go just a little bit. The songs, the style, it is rock and roll disguised. You know, it's it's all prettied up in country music, uh, in, in that illusion of country music. Rascal Flats is rock and roll. And trust me, Joe Don Rooney can spank the plank. Dude can play. Happy birthday, Joe Don Rooney. 41 years old. On this day in history, okay, moment of silence, 1996, Tupac Shakur dies. Yeah, on this day in history. Fader fact. This is a real fader fact, by the way. This is this is one of those fader facts that you you need to remember. Only 40 people live 800 feet above the ground of New York City. Only 40. It's an exclusive exclusive club and privilege. For the super, uber, stupid, rich. Only 40. Tonight, author Sid Rice is here. We're going to discuss history, history 101, history class fade to black style 101. We're going to talk lost history. We're going to talk about his extremely uh, prolific work, The Legacy of the Ages. Tomorrow night, Chuck Zukowski and Ben Mesrich are here. And then, of course, Thursday night is another fader night. Open lines, John Rappaport and his No More Fake newsroom. Now, uh, check this out. I mentioned California. Uh, (laughs) 
every time I just look to the left and go to Twitter, there's something brilliant there. Um, I mentioned California, the opening of the show. And a new study uh, has just been released that set out to find the happiest states in the country, in the United States. And they did it across 28 metrics, which I'm going to get to in a second. But some of them were like emotional health and income level and, and you know, how many people participate in sports or, you know, jog, you know, ride bikes every single day, that kind of stuff. And before I get to that, and I know you're wondering, you know, the happiest states in America. Now, probably there's... I'm going to say this right now. Probably a thousand people right now said, I live in the happiest state. There's another multitude of you that are scratching your head and wondering if you made the list. Well, I have the entire list of 51, by the way. Washington, D.C. is included. And looking at the list and seeing what's there, I was more than surprised. And then when I got deeper into this and started looking at the metrics, and I spent the time doing this today, there were some major, major surprises. There are going to be some pissed off people. There are going to be some people in denial. There's going to be a lot of people surprised. The people that live in states that are at the bottom of this list, the unhappy states, are going to look at these states that, that are in the top 10 and go, that's impossible. It doesn't make any sense, but it's here. And I I need to break this down with you. And like I said, there's going to be some unhappy people out there. There's going to be some people that are proud. The happiest state in America is, are you ready? Utah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You can go ahead and laugh. Utah. You bleeping ta. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm only going to say that I'm going to talk more about Utah in a second, but I'm going to say one thing. I have, I've been to Salt Lake City many times. I've been through Utah I don't know how many times. But I have been through and stayed in Salt Lake City during Christmas. And I, I will say this. It is the most Christmassy city in America. Okay, it looks like a bleeping postcard from the North Pole. The entire city, <laughs> from when you pull in to when you pull out, it's it. it I I could see that, but there's other things that are interesting about Utah. I'm going to get to a second, but number two, the number two happiest state is Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota, all right. And now, North Dakota is third. Hawaii is fourth. Hawaii makes sense. North Dakota, not so much. Minnesota, ah, oh, man, kind of wondering about that, right? Utah, okay, it's a trippy list. The fifth happiest state, Colorado, right? <laughs> They're high. They're high in Colorado. Rocky Mountain High. That's what I meant. They're in fifth. Rounding out the top 10 were, in order, Idaho, Nebraska, South Dakota, and coming in at number 10, California. Trippy. No New York, no Florida, right? Arizona, New Mexico, all, all wonderful state. I mean, all the states have their 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 pluses, but is that a strange top ten happy estates? Is that where you would have gone? I don't think so, unless you live there. But if you don't live there, you would have never guessed this top ten. I know this. Utah excelled in three categories in particular. The state has the lowest rate of heart attacks in the nation at just 2.7%, as well as the highest volunteerism rate at 45.2%. One out of two people in Utah are volunteers. There's more to this. Utah also had the lowest divorce rate in the country at 15.97%, 16%. To put all of that in perspective for you, 
fade to black style. The highest divorce rate is Washington, D.C. at a peer, holy crap rate of 31%. 31%. Wow. Now, I know you're wondering, the unhappiest state was West Virginia, which was found to have the third highest depression rate the third highest obesity rate. I would have never guessed that. And depression in West Virginia. Why? I don't know. And the first lowest volunteerism rate in the country. Nobody in West Virginia volunteers for anything. The bottom 12, and then I'm going to get to these, uh, I'm going to get to these metrics. The bottom 12 were, and I went with 12 because my home state of Indiana came in at number 40. All right. I was born in Illinois, but I claim Indiana. I claim being a Hoosier. Indiana came in at number 40. I was shocked. Followed by, and check this out. This is the bottom of the list. These are the most unhappiest states in the United States. Indiana, number 40. Followed by New Mexico, Missouri, Michigan, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Kentucky, and Alabama, with West Virginia ranked number 51 dead last because Washington, D.C. was included, and they were ranked at, get this, number 18. How can Washington, D.C. be a happier place than any of those states? New Mexico? Doesn't make any sense. The only one that kind of makes sense in this list is Michigan. Because Oklahoma, Tennessee, Louisiana, Louisiana is one of the gems in, in this great country of ours. Louisiana has got the coolest, freakiest people out of the entire country live in Louisiana. That's a great state. And I don't know why they are at the bottom. We're going to get to that. Arkansas, too. Really? Arkansas almost lost out, man. They came in at number 47. Narrowly, ne narrowly beating out Mississippi right next door. So there you go. Now let's get to some of these metrics. This is where it gets really interesting. All right, uh, let's see here. I've got uh, five minutes. I'll, I'll get. I'll. I'll try to get as much of this in as I can. Um, let's. Uh, let's start at the top. There's one. Okay, I was going to break this down in a different way, but uh, I'm going to tell you this now up front. California. Oddly enough, California did not make the metrics list in the top five or bottom five for anything. What's up? What? No, I didn't. Nope. We're still good. Uh, is this the five top partying states, right? The awesomest states were Michigan, Texas, Maryland, Louisiana, and Oregon. The lowest, that's, the, that's number one, Michigan, right? The lowest partying states were Hawaii, Idaho, Maine, Rhode Island, and Vermont. All make sense. Lowest depression rate, number one, Hawaii. Makes sense. Highest depression rate in the country, Oregon. Oregon. Highest depression rate is in Oregon. Where you get the most sleep in the country is Colorado. Where you get the least amount of sleep, number 51, Hawaii. The lowest obesity, obesity rate, just discussed this a, a second ago, but I didn't tell you the winner. Washington, D.C. has the skinniest people in the country. It's because they're smoking crack. Highest obesity rate, Mississippi, number 51. Number 50 was Arkansas, <laughs> Arkansas. Highest sports participation, number one, Oregon. But they're, they got the highest depression rate. Doesn't make any sense. The lowest sports participation state is Mississippi, <laughs> narrowly beating out by a tenth of a point, Arkansas. Arkansas, Mississippi, it, it, I don't get it. The lowest suicide rate in the country, 
the District of Columbia. Again, it doesn't make any sense. They're all crackheads, right? Doesn't make any sense. Highest suicide rate in the United States, Montana. I always thought it was Alaska. Alaska uh, came in at, at number 50. New Mexico, by the way, suicide rate number 49. Wyoming, 48. Utah, number 47, but it's supposed to be the happiest state. But they're almost got one of the highest suicide rates in the country. Lowest number of hours worked, number one, Utah. Highest number of hours worked, Alaska, which beat out Wyoming, North Dakota, Washington, D.C., and Louisiana. Lowest long-term unemployment rate, North Dakota. Need a job? Go to North, North Dakota. Alaska, Hawaii, uh, Iowa, Nebraska, Montana. The worst unemployment in the country, Washington, D.C. Go make some sense out of this. Highest income growth, number one, North Dakota. Number two, Washington, D.C. Lowest income growth. These two cities, the bottom two, surprised me. The worst in the country is Nevada. And the second worst, Arizona. I would have never guessed that. And, and Florida and Georgia and Michigan are all in the bottom five. Uh, let's see here. Lowest divorce rate. I mentioned that earlier is Utah. The highest divorce rate, <laughs> District of Columbia. Safest state to live in. It, it makes it every single year. Vermont. Vermont. Uh, followed by Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Maine. Uh, totally predictable there. The least safest states in America are the worst is Mississippi, number 50, Oklahoma, number 49, Alaska, number 48, and this is trippy, New Mexico, New Mexico, Albuquerque, <laughs> unsafe, <laughs> what, Santa Fe, unsafe, these are beautiful cities, Roswell, I don't think so, and then, Rounding out the, the bottom five, number 47, I, I can't leave it out, Tennessee. Is this strange to you? Does this feel accurate? It, it, to me, it's all over the place. But this is what is funny. Did you hear me say New York in any of these metrics? Did you hear me say Florida? In any of these metrics? Did you hear me say Illinois in any of these metrics? Did you hear me say Texas in any of these metrics? Did you hear me say Washington State or California? None of them were in the bottom or top five. Very interesting, very strange, and that's why you come to Fade to Black because tonight it's history lesson night. I'm your host, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. Tonight, Sid Rice and his books, The Legacy of the Ages. This is Fade to Black. I'll be right back. Stay right there. Follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. Email is Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, The Planet. I'll be right back. Listening to Jimmy Church fade to black. Fade to black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. What's up, revolutionaries? It's me, Jimmy Church. Do you have an IRS or state tax issue? Well, I did, and I called national tax experts. My problems were fixed, done, fini, and man, I gotta tell you, it was a relief. 
National tax experts are a recognized tax office that services clients in all 50 states. It doesn't matter where you live. Give them a call. I'm telling you, they take the time to understand each and every client's individual financial status as well as their financial goals. And that's exactly what you need, my brother, when you're taking on the evil three letter. So, seriously, give them a call today at 1-877-909-5444. Again, 1-877-909-5444. Or go check out their website, www.nattaxexperts.com. That's N-A-T-T-A-X-E-X-P-E-R-T-S dot com. Tell them Jimmy sent you. Hi, folks. In a world of GMO, genetically modified organisms, that is, chemicals, processed foods, and a healthcare system that's unraveling like a cheap suit, it's time to prepare. God created herbs, and herbs help man. Our body can heal itself, just sometimes we need assistance. You need some help? Get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com. Our mild detox is quite powerful with its unique blend of eight different herbs. And if you're looking for more, our non GMO supplements will help you with different needs you might have. Health should be a top priority. Take care of your health naturally. Log on to get the tea. Dot com. That's get the tea dot com. Give your body a treat. Let the herbs do their thing naturally. Read all the testimonies on the website. Get the tea dot com. That's get the tea dot com. Sickness and viruses are like intruders and herbs are like warriors. Let the tea work for you. That's get the tea dot com. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Hi, this is Chase Klutsky with Fate Magazine Radio, and you're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA digital broadcast station, where the Fader Knots rock. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Massey, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. Hi, yeah. Welcome back. Fade to Black. On the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet, and I'm your host, Jimmy Church. It's going to be a great night tonight. I've been wanting and looking forward to this show uh, for a while. You can follow me on Twitter at jchurchradio. Email is jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. And it's time to get ready to get your education on. You know, I stress it nearly every single night on the show, and I so badly just want to have a pop quiz at the end of tonight. You better be taking some notes, because Sid Rice, our guest tonight, is the author of the Legacy of the Ages series, which includes Foundations, Volumes 1 and 2, and Awakening, Volumes 1 through 6, and is also the author of The Key, a nonfiction work on the Bible and astrology. We're going to also try to get that in tonight, too, as well. Two of my favorite subjects. The legacy works are probably the most detailed accounts of the history of us and our planet, like in Eva. We're talking about starting back with Earth four and a half billion years ago and continuing through today. Everything is presented in a true linear form with all of the names, dates, and events and notes based on the facts as we know them. And it is, without a doubt, to me, the most exhaustive and complete history of everything that has ever been done. Those are big words, but I have the books here, and I would like to welcome, for the first time, and to the world, Mr. Sid Rice. Sid, good evening. Hey, Jimmy. How you doing? Pretty lofty words coming from the old church stir. Hurt yeah, here, yeah, they are. Um, <laughs> I hope I live up to it. <laughs> you know, um, okay let's let's get the uh, let's get the first time guest disclaimer out of the way because we have a lot to talk about tonight. But uh, Sid, this is uh, uh, you and I sitting on my couch uh, with your books, <laughs> having a conversation between friends about these books, and however we start and however we end, we're going to end as friends, man. Are you ready to go? 
Yeah, Jim, thanks. And it, I got to say, it's an honor to be on your show. No. Thank you. Oh, man. Look, okay. Uh, just let me say this, everybody. Sid is a very, very cool dude. Okay. He, he is cool. And um, we were sitting um, up in uh, Sacramento. And Sid goes over and collects the uh, uh, a volume or two, uh, and and brings them over to me and goes, "This is this is this is what I was talking about." And he hands, and and we were talking. I I didn't Sid, and you saw my mind how how it was blown, <laughs> right? But when somebody says that they're an author of a book, I respect that because I don't have the patience to write, you know. But the last thing I suspect when somebody says that they're an author of a book, that they're an off author of a set of encyclopedias, <laughs> right? And that, that's two different things. And and I sat down uh, with uh, Foundations, Volume 1, as you remember, I sat there uh, probably the better – part of an hour, I would think, uh, reading the book by myself yeah. and was completely and utterly blown away. The amount of work that is in this is it's, it's beyond description. And unless somebody can hold the books and understand what I'm talking about, they don't really have a concept. But I'm going to start the, the this evening here with this question. Why on earth would you ever want to try to tackle this what was the motivation well it didn't start out to to be what you had you know um in 98 i was t-boned by an illegal alien and messed me up and <clears throat> I, I had to wonder what i was going to do for money for the rest of my life because i, I was going to lose my job because i couldn't do it anymore and you know it came to me well you know cheapest thing I could do <laughs> would be write a book and you know you know I, I would sit there and wonder and, and remember when I when I was younger how wonderful it would be if I could play music record music and study history and the accident actually allowed all this to happen it's it's weird how um, an unintentional epiphany happens right in your life, right? right. I've told I, this. I guess this could be considered an epiphany. It certainly is life changing, um, and and you don't expect it, and so therefore, here you go, right? And yeah. totally unexpected, but it gives you the opportunity to fulfill that dream, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah, and when when I started, it, it was like this is 1998, and it was before all the Templar stuff came out. And I, you know, I was really into the Templars at that time, so I figured I'd write a book about the Templars. So you know, I'm gathering information, and and I was I was probably like you all my life, just a history geek, gathering information, videos, documentaries, all that stuff. So I'm looking. I'm putting it all together, and I'm going, "Oh my God, <laughs> what am I going to do with all this stuff?" And and I I, I thought, "Well, okay, I got to put everything in sequence in a timeline." So I did that, and it started making more sense to me. But I also wanted to know what was going on in the rest of the world, and 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 everything that surrounded the Templars, you know, art and everything. And so I started adding this, that, and the other thing. And by the time I was done with that, I'm looking at going, wow, this is better than a book on the Templars. What else can I add? So then I started, oh, I love this subject. I'm going to add this. So I find all kinds of timelines for that. And it, and it just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And it became the monster that it is now. Well, it, and was it also uh, because you were – dissatisfied in, in other history works that are out there and the way that they were presented, that must have had a big part to do with it, too, as a motivation. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it was really frustrating because nobody was tying things together with events and, and, and discoveries and everything that surrounds it. I mean, nothing stands alone in a vacuum. Everything's connected to everything else. And one thing, one of the things that I figured out in doing all this is 
Yeah, nothing stands alone. Everything is connected. And, and you can tell that if something is real, it connects with everything that's supposed to be connected to around it. And, and, and the other thing uh, for me, well, let me, let me say this, uh, uh, just as a little side note. This was probably, uh, I don't know, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. And I, I was walking I, uh, a block from uh, Rita. Uh, Rita's a nice place. And I looked uh, to my left. I see a book on the ground, on the concrete, just sitting by itself. I'm not kidding either. It was just sitting there. And I picked it up. And No, there were two. There were two books, and they were stacked up on top of each other, but they're on the ground. And I was like, wow, that's kind of weird, you know, and I picked them up and one was uh, a college uh, art history 101 book. OK. And the other one was a college uh, world history book 101. And I thought, wow, man, how, how cool is this? Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I still have both books to this day. The world history book I have read. And Rita will back me up on this. I've read it cover to cover probably 10 times. Wow. Got to the end, which was modern day, well, up, up to that time, you know, whatever, 2005 or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the beginning of world history, and it started uh, It started uh, uh, 3000 BC with uh, Egypt is, is where it started. Mm -hmm. and, and But I'm a lover of history. And as complete as it was... It was full of BS, mm -hmm. right? And that's the thing. I was, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm like, who is writing this? Where are they getting this stuff from? But kids are reading this. Kids in in, in college are reading this, and they take yeah. it as fact yep. because it's in their textbook and it's being taught in college, so it's got to be true, right? Yeah, and the textbooks are getting weaker and weaker and weaker, and it's a shame. And, really and so how did you start to, uh, uh, let, let's go with this. Let's start with uh, Foundations, Volume 1, which is uh, the first book of yours that uh, I was uh, able to take a look at. And you start at the very, very beginning, four and a half billion years ago, right? You start right there. Um, why did you make that conscious decision? And how easy is it to even gather that kind of information out there in an accurate sort of way? No, it's pretty easy, actually. You just got to know what you're looking for. Um, I decided to start there because uh, the Bible starts there in the beginning, you know, all that stuff. And the Bible has been a big part of my life as far as trying to understand God and his creation. And legacy is, is a tool for me to help me understand <laughs> humanity and God's creation and what's up with what, you know? Yeah. Do you, do you remember everything that's in these books? Oh, hell no. <laughs> it's, it's like my external hard drive, you know? Right, right, right. Because it's exhaustive. I mean, it, it's, it's very complete. Yeah. And, try, try remembering all that. Try remembering everything in one of those books. I mean, oh my God. Well, I tried to, uh, I tried to trip you up. I tried to impress you with my history knowledge <laughs> and, and, uh, and those were very engaging conversations that we had, mm -hmm. but everything that I brought up with you, you seem to, uh, not only recall in detail, but we're also very passionate about too, as well. Well, the subjects that you brought up, I'm, I'm I'm very passionate about, you know. So that's that's easy. But once you get into the minutia of stuff, yeah, I kind of lose it, and I kind of need my database. Right. And now, what do you? Okay, um, these were completed when? When? Uh, when was uh, Foundations? Oh God. Like? Um, I stopped working on everything about five or six years ago. Now, because, was this before uh, Gobekli Tepe started to hit the mainstream? Oh, yeah. You don't know how disappointed I was that, that uh, you know, I'd finished that volume and I couldn't include that. And, and here's the thing. I, in the past 10 years, I've been collecting so much data that I have to put into books. And in the past 10 years, there's been so many discoveries that overturn what we thought we believed we knew and such as 
Oh, well, go back to Capley. Your big thing is is, is right. one of them. Right. But, you know, all kinds of anthropological, all kinds of archaeological stuff. Um, it's just everything is, is the techniques, the, the science that we have is, is just astounding, you know. And it, it, is, it is that coupled with the Internet is just the information has just exploded on us. It's, it's like too much information. And this is one of the reasons I, I had to put stuff down so that I wouldn't forget it and that I could go back and look at it and see how everything lined up and connected with each other. There's a, there's a couple of things. Well, okay. Before we get back to history, um, have you uh, considered having these published? Yes. Yes. Um Yes, I did. And, and Rita brought up uh, some interesting ideas because I, I do want to get it digitized because that allows more people to be able to access it and use it. But I don't have the time or the know-how to be able to do this. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Well, that, okay. So you would be interested in publishing then? Oh yeah. I'd love to get, get a, the volumes in every college in America. <laughs> I'd be uh, absurdly rich. I, I can only, I can only imagine the reaction and, and, and I would think that they should do that, but let's, let's get back to uh, the philosophy of this too, as well. Mm -hmm. There, um, when we have, uh, you know, the, the age of the earth being four and a half billion years, mm -hmm. and now we have the, uh, uh, the age of man, modern man, homo sapien sapien, mm -hmm. uh, we have a range of dates here. We have a range. Uh, nobody really knows. That's the first thing. So right. anybody that says that they really, really know, and this is the, you know, this is the fact, no, that's, that's BS. So. I, I I think they're they're honing in on it. You know, the sciences are, are really helping with that. You well, know, but, but you are, you are right. You know, we, we probably will never know definitely about a lot of things. And as you compile this, and let's let's just say for argument's sake, let's just pull out a, a date that's been thrown around. Let's say Homo sapiens sapiens one hundred fifty thousand years. Let's just yeah. go with that number. Okay. okay. Now. But the time between 150,000 years ago and a million and a half years ago with Lucy, which is a, a loose fact, by the way, right. Lucy, right. and then jumping back to four and a half billion years ago, now we have a huge chunk of time with no man. Yeah. When you compile this type of data together, have you thought about the, the possibility of different uh, uh, civilizations that could possibly have come and gone and risen and, and gone away throughout the ages. That, oh, yeah. That oh, you yeah. have this huge, complete blank slate that is uh, uh, 4.2, 4.3, 4.4 uh, billion years of blank space. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's, it, for for me, these it's always fascinating that that through the the natural processes of, of the earth that things get buried over. You know, just it, I always found it fascinating that things would get buried just naturally, wind blowing on them, dust gathering on it, you know, all that stuff. And then you take the 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 motion of the tectonic plates and 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 things just being crushed by by ice and glaciers and tectonic forces it just it just makes you wonder um how much has been churned up yeah yeah and mowed over and, and crushed mowed, yeah, and, yeah. and pummeled and you know, pummeled and and absolutely the the thing uh the other thing as as we look at this then we have the other considerations to come in. We have the alternative history guys, mm -hmm. uh, one of them being Lloyd Pye, who I respect greatly. Yeah, I love Lloyd. He's yeah. a good man. And, and I want to spend some time on Lloyd. And then we have uh, 
uh, the hardcore academia that is going to do their presentation. And then we have the Darwin side of things. And then we have a true missing link that is slapped right in the middle. And as you have compiled all of this information and you start to get to these blank spots in the book, what do you do? Do you just sit back and wonder why these blank spots are there? Oh, yeah. And I wish I could find something to fill it with, you know, and I, I have so much data that I've collected. I'm hoping that it's filling in some of these empty spaces. What do you think about the missing link? And what do you think about Lloyd Pye's uh, proposals? And how did you tackle the Anunnaki? Oh, wow. Um, Anunnaki, I need my database. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long since I, I've, I've, I've been into all this stuff. You know, it's been six years since I've been so deep into it that uh, it, back then I could have answered it. Boom. Right. Well, well, but my question is, you know, Lloyd says uh, that uh, uh, every, you know, after every great catastrophe, after everything that was cataclysmic that happened here on Earth, we got reseeded and everything just happened again overnight. You know, uh, uh, animals, flora, fauna, and, uh, and, and, and was done in a complete fashion. And as you compile this, do you kind of feel that same way? Um, I don't know. I don't think things ha happen overnight. Um, life is a long process, and, and evolution is a long process. And, you know, I'm not saying that, there, that I don't leave open the possibility for divine intervention and, and all that kind of stuff. But for me, I think it's important to to keep grounded on the planet and and try to explain what happens on this planet by what happens on this planet instead of injecting aliens or gods or angels or any of that stuff well you you just mentioned divine intervention um and when we look at and you mentioned the bible too as well mm -hmm. so if we take the bible in its literal form and you know the earth is now only six thousand years old you just wrote a book or you compile this that goes back four and a half billion years. Who is well, right? I, I, I don't take the Bible literally. I don't think you can. I mean, it's, it's the, the first chapter is poetry. Well, it's a good novel for sure. Yeah. For, for certain. Well, then the divine intervention that you're talking about, what are you referring to? Oh, you know, Adam and Eve and, and, and that whole thing. Um, you know, God creating man out of dust and then woman out of the rib and all that stuff. I, I think anthropology does a good job of, of, of describing the miracle of life. And, and I find it just as miraculous and wonderful, wondrous as, as, as you know, God coming down and making man, you know. I, I think it's just, just as wonderful, wondrous and, and miraculous. Well, let's stay right there. Um, so are you suggesting that, uh, homo sapien sapien at 150,000 years ago, that was Adam and Eve? Yeah, maybe. Could be. <laughs> How so? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, why? That's, that's the important question. Why would you do it there? Um, I, uh, I like, I don't want to keep pointing back at Lloyd Pye, but he presents a really good, solid, honest case. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, when he suggests that 150,000 years ago, boom, DNA was altered, chromosomes and, uh, uh, the, the pairs and everything all started at 150,000 years ago and our face changed, our forehead changed, our chin changed, our skin yeah, thickness and mutations happen. Was, so was that mutation divine intervention? Was that Adam and Eve? Well, I, I suppose some people could say that, or some people can just say that it's a, a natural event that happened, or, or a logical event, the, the, the next logical evolutionary step. And how do you think that happened? Are you saying it was by accident? It was a lightning strike? Uh, you know, what, what uh, you know, the, the oh. odds of it being natural, that's, that's, that that's, Pretty pretty large odds. Well, mutations happen in genetics all the time. It's part of the DNA and right, which happens oh. over over millions of years. I can get that. Oh, but, and it happens, you know, rather quickly. You know, it could be due to radiation, 
you know, exposure to radiation or, or the sun or whatever. And Mutations so, happen. So you, you're, you, you're suggesting that the possibility of the, the transition that happened, that natural evolution, which apparently happened literally overnight with us, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could have been radiation or some natural mutation, and then one day we were literally sloped, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, uh, flat-faced, and the next day we're upright human beings. Yeah, I mean, we. we I, I like evolution. You know, it, it explains a lot of things logically and linearly, and. Yeah, I can see that happening. I mean, we have all kinds of different hominids and uh, uh, different species of of man, you could say. And there's also interbreeding that goes on, and you know, there's there's all kinds of variations that can happen to cause mutations. Well, the the argument that I always present with that, and I know it's a basic one and it's fundamental, but as we look around Earth. And we can go back 75 million years with a couple of species that are still surviving today. They haven't mutated at all. They right. haven't changed. Right. right? Sharks um, aren't driving cars today. <laughs> right? And yeah, I mean, That'd be frightening. Yeah, right? <laughs> Nothing else is, is, has mutated, but, but we have. Yeah. You know, and we have humor, and we have sadness, and we have emotions. We certainly have vocal cords and we can speak and we can in invent and and before somebody says well jimmy man you know uh, the birds can take worms out of trees with sticks but you know like stop stop that's not what i'm talking about yeah and and i don't think birds are going to be using cell phones tomorrow that's not that that so uh, th there hasn't been any other evolution out there only us and that's what i can't explain away yeah, I, I yeah I get that too. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say to that. It's, it's one of those things. One of the reasons that I put all this stuff together so that hopefully something will jump out and say, "Oh, here's your answer." <laughs> yeah. When we come back, let's take a break right here, uh, Sid. And when we come back after this break. We're going to jump forward in time a little bit. We've got to get to Gobekli Tepe, and obviously we got to discuss Egypt. We've got, oh, to, yeah. discuss, we've got to discuss Sumer, uh, Mesopotamia, and, and other cultures around the world. And we'll do all of that next with Sid Rice. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, The Planet. Stay right there. Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. Hello, I'm Hakimi and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church. Fade to black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. Fade or not, things are never what they seem. For the past century, forbidden subjects such as UFOs, backward engineering, human abductions, secret space programs, underground bases, suppressed free energy devices, and other fantastic notions have tested the human mind, forcing it to decipher fact from fiction. Chronicling what he calls the alternative narrative, author Brad Olson gets down to the middle of it all in his best-selling book, Future Esoteric, now released in a second edition by CCC Publishing. And now, you can get Future Esoteric at a special price, plus another free book by just using the promo code JIMMY when you check out. Just click on the Future Esoteric or CCC Publishing banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Go Beckley Teppy.
Uncertainty has become the talking point when it comes to financial markets. One thing is becoming certain, safe haven assets. Hard assets are now becoming the choice of informed investors. The most recognized and valued hard asset is gold. The highest performing asset this year is gold. Trust gold to protect and grow your IRA or 401k. Central banks and billionaires are doing the same thing. Choose a more stable asset that has tremendous upside potential. As these uncertain times threaten the markets, your decision to reduce your exposure Exposure to these markets before further negative effects to your portfolio would be well timed. Call 1 800 Gold IRA to transfer your existing IRA into an actual physical gold and silver IRA. American Bullion is the pioneer of gold IRAs. They handle all the details for you. Call 1 800 Gold IRA to get prepared. Start protecting and growing your IRA and 401k before the next crash. American Bullion. 1 800 Gold IRA. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. We are of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full-range boomboxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this. It's amazing. It's just $129, and use the promo code JCRTWS, and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go back, Lee Tappy. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. Across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, the planet. Welcome back, Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Sid Rice. He is the author of the Legacy of the Ages series, Foundations Volume 1 and 2, and Awakening Volumes 1 through 6. Want to remind everybody tomorrow night, Chuck Zukowski and Ben Mesrich are going to be here. And then Thursday night, of course, is another Fader Night open lines. Oh, I want to make this really cool announcement. It's not uh, this week. We're going to be this weekend. We're going to be uh, at David Ike. But next week on Friday, our very own Steve Murillo is going to be live in the studio with me over at Coast to Coast. How is that? So Steve is going to come over. And uh, not only uh, have a conversation with me, but he's going to help me man the phones on open lines over at Coast to Coast. So everybody, all of you fade or nots, come hang out with us over at Coast to Coast. Uh, not this Friday, but uh, next Friday, the 23rd. All right, Sid, as you uh, compiled this um, and, and started working on this, which which area of history was your favorite to write about and go and investigate and research? Oh, I like the 60s. I like World War II, and I like ancient history. Yeah. Okay, you're breaking up just a little bit. Say that again. I like the uh, World War Two, nineteen sixties, and ancient history. Ancient history, and what part of ancient history? We'll get to a uh, World War Two and uh, the sixties in a bit. But uh, which which part of ancient history? Um, I guess up up Egypt, uh, Egypt, and Egypt forward. Egypt forward. One of the things, uh, and that's that's you know uh, that's that's my favorite part of history too as well. Um, that whole uh, that whole part of uh, the world and and the valley there and and uh, uh, the uh, well modern day 
uh, Iraq, um, but that entire area going back through Cairo and, of course, up through uh, Israel. An amazing time for the world. You know, the Greek and the Roman Empire is great, but that didn't happen. You know, what's bizarre is Egypt is so old. It is so old that the Egyptians don't even remember anything today, yeah, right? And, and it, it, it encompassed several um, astrological ages, too. Yes, and it, but that's how old it is. It yeah. is so old that Cleopatra, right, the last pharaoh, is closer to us in date than she was with ancient Egypt. Yeah. Right now, if you stop and think about it in those terms, that's how old Egypt is. And uh, now, uh, okay, so let's go back. Um, we have uh, s the new stuff uh, that has uh, come forward, like Gobekli Tepe, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the when Mene uh, formed. Well, uh, we assume at this point that he was the first pharaoh. Don't really actually know, right. but uh, uh, and that happening at around three thousand BC. But um, before Upper and Lower Egypt combined, the data for that knowledge, how did you start to conquer that? Because nobody, no scholars out there can even seem to agree, actually, what was going on. Well, one of the things that I've done in, in the book that no one else has done is, is I included the astrological ages. And that helped me understand the symbology. And, and to be able to place the dominant symbology to the age and also the time of, of that age, right? So, like, we have, I, I, I put this, the Sphinx obviously should go in the age of Leah, Day of the Lion. So that puts that back up to you know, 10, 11,000 years ago, and that's the same time as go back to Tepe. Right. You know, and... A lot, a lot of the symbology that you see in Egypt and Sumeria and um, other cultures during that time is the bull, right? And a lot of the archaeologists and historians that, that oh, they worship the bull, you know? No, they they use Taurus uh, as their representation of God's will. Right, so when you see pictures of the bull with with a round disc in, in, between the horns, yeah, that that means uh, the sun in the age of Taurus. So when you see that symbology dominant, you can place all that stuff in the age of Taurus. One of the things that I don't understand uh, when it comes to ancient cultures. Um, going back to, right, you know, I'll say go back to Tepe again, but the, when I look at the constellations, e either in the night sky or in a book, I don't see the animals that, th that are traced out that uh, other cultures have seen. Yeah. And, and those animals are, are different in different cultures, you know, and I was looking at some of the pictures of go, go back to Tepe today and I saw some, I saw scorpions and, and lions and stuff like that. Those are easily recognizable, but it's going to, I'm going to have to do a lot more research on this because I think that a lot of those symbols are their astrological symbols. Well, when, when we start to look at Taurus, who was representing Taurus um, okay, Leo uh, was uh, facing west, where the uh, or facing east with uh, 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 the Sphinx at ten thousand five hundred BC. Right. What what cultures were representing Taurus? Uh, Sumeria, um, Egypt, um, the Minoans. Oh yeah, okay, that's right. I, I, you're absolutely right with the Minoans. The um, and then we had this remarkable uh, jump in uh, technology, knowledge, religion, government, civilization in general uh, that happened pretty remarkably quick. If you follow uh, um, uh, modern academia uh, right. with uh, uh, what was going on in Mesopotamia and Sumer and 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 of course Egypt too as well. 
uh, but it seemed to happen really, really quickly. How do you account for, and you can say divine if you want, but how do you account for somebody sitting down uh, when the rest of the world was Stone Age and thinking up the wheel? You know, thinking up uh, written language, uh, which seemed to happen around the same time and overnight. How do you account for that? Genius of mankind. Well, I mean, how so? Well, there's always geniuses that, that figure things out, and <clears throat> it's, it's just, I don't know, you, I, last show you are talking about Da Vinci. You know, and, and it, these these geniuses change the world because they they they're passionate about what they're into. They they have a, a desire to understand, and they and, and they just go for it. You know, and and they they make the connections that allow for the next advance. This is this is the this is the issue that I have with the wheel, and I want to discuss this for a second. It's not the wheel, okay? It's not the wheel. Everybody needs to get that out of your brain. It's not the wheel. You can't have a wheel without an axle. You can't have an axle without grease. You can't have, you know, it's the complete picture that has to happen. You know, but there, there's an evolution to it. There's an evolution to design. Well, like what? Square wheels? That wouldn't work. <laughs> That's my point. Yeah. You, you know, it is. It, it's the wheel. The wheel has to happen all at the same time with an axle, the concept, a cart, and and everything just has to, you know, and that come together. It has to come together. You know, like I said, nothing stands alone in a vacuum. Everything is connected. So some genius connected the dots to be able to. Oh. Look what I can do. I can make a, a, a carriage. Hmm. Okay. This is this is this is what I think. Let's keep this discussion going. I like where this is going. Okay. This is this is the thing. Uh, one would like to think that cell phones just happen overnight, right? Uh, they did. They they did not, right? And that's an evolutionary process. And then we ended Same. up with cell phones. Same. And then if you go back to Edison. Then there was things that were before Edison that he was taught and you had the telegraph and then the, you can back up before that and before that. And it's all taught and everything comes from something before it. When we have something that spr uh, sprouts immediately overnight, like the wheel, which is extremely sophisticated, right? That what what came before the wheel that somebody was taught? You know that it's an evolutionary. Pro there was nothing. I, it's either that or somebody had the wheel a long time ago, and we have evidence of it. At at, uh, uh, at what what year did chariots finally hit Egypt? You know what I mean, fifteen hundred BC. You know something like that. Well, necessity um, is the mother of invention. You know, there's there's that aspect to it too. Well, and which goes back to my point. Everything is taught. I don't think that anybody just sits down one day and and just invents something just to, out of the blue. The wheel. One day, some you know, some cave woman walks in and goes, "What are you thinking about?" Well, you know, I got this idea. You know, I'm going to build a cart today. I've got this thing called an axle, and I need some grease, and I need that, and I, and, you know, some are going to have spokes. Maybe we're going to make some. You know, it, it it doesn't work that way. You know, and it 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 has to have been taught, and for Egypt to appear upright with everything in place, right? They were they were ready to go at 3100 BC. But they were complete. There wasn't anything missing. They had written language. They had uh, uh, mathematics. They had architecture. They had art. They had sculpture. Uh, they had agriculture. They had government. They had religion. So know? let me let me break it down this way. All right, let, let's break it down astrologically. All right, and let's start with Leo. All right, I think Leo is well. Leo represents the lion, which is rulers and, and, and kings like that. So back in the age of Leo's, when uh, mankind came together enough 
to be able to have leaders. And, and, and then we move into um, like, like, like Taurus. Taurus represents money. You got, and the symbol of that is in Wall Street. You see the big bull on Wall Street. Right? When we reach the age of Taurus, we, we, we're having economic dealings. We, we've grown and evolved to the point culturally, civilization-wise, where we are starting to interact with other civilizations, other cultures, and develop trade and all that. Then we move into the age of Aries, which is, you know, th these different civilizations fighting each other over stuff, right? Then we move into the age of Pisces, which, you know, is, is telling us, well, let's, let's stop being warriors and killing each other and let's love each other and turn the other cheek and love your neighbor, right? Now we're going into the, the age of Aquarius, which is... Um, if you look at cell phones and computers, they represent the age of Aquarius immaculately. Right? So in each age, we, we develop to be able to um, create the vehicles that we need to make this thing happen. I need you to uh, speak up a little bit in the microphone. Okay, sorry. Yeah, it's it's, it's okay. Just uh, um, well, it, so are you? Right, well, let, let me let me give you another example. All right. So we all we all know the story of, of Moses coming down the mountain, right? And he's carrying the golden tablets, and he sees the children of Israel worshiping the golden calf, right? And people. Up until now, I said, oh, they're just worshiping the bull and all that stuff. But that's all astrological stuff. There's astrological meanings to this, right? Moses came down and says, no, 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 no. Age of Taurus is all done, right? Now we're going to move into the age of Aries. And you look at, at the, the Old Testament and you see, oh, it's all about war. It's about killing people. It's about taking over territory. It's about wiping out everything. Yeah, and, and and then you move to to the time of uh, Jesus and Pisces, and he's saying, you know what? No, 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 no. Age of Aries is all done. Right? It's time that we we take on the symbology of the fish. You have the ichthys and all that, and you and and all the things that Christ talked about was Piscean in nature. Turn the other cheek and love your neighbor. Uh, and all that. But now, Pisces is over, and we're moving into the age of Aquarius. And, you know, it, each, each age builds on to the next to allow us to evolve. You know, and the ancients saw the, these astrological symbols as the will of God, as the way that we're supposed to de be developing. And, and it all fits. It all works. The thing that um, I'm I'm most uh, uh, hesitant about when we we talk about all of this is that the the spurts and the timeline that we have, and like you said, we were talking about Da Vinci the other night about this too as well. Is when you look at these timelines and you look at these bursts of knowledge. It seems almost that uh, it was not downloaded, but possibly even internal, that at that point in, in a linear sense, right, we're moving along on a, uh, on, a, on a straight timeline, that at that moment in time, that discovery uh, needed to be made. And it, that, it, it, it doesn't... The only thing that fits in any of this that makes everything make sense, the only way that you can start to put this together is that it wasn't by accident, that it wasn't just, you know, some random discovery and some genius that was sitting there, but that uh, quite possibly this just was already in our DNA and it was meant to happen on that day and and the knowledge was there and was presented. Yeah, I think so. I can go with that. You know, but it, it, it evolved to that point, you know. 
the and and going back to if this is the case if we if we open this up to discussion and we go back to Lloyd Pye's hypothesis with all of this and his theory was that our DNA was altered and he specifically suggested that it was the Anunnaki that we had some other intelligence come in and snip and plug and pre-program uh, our DNA. We have a large chunk of our DNA is junk DNA. Uh, we don't know what it's there for. And quite possibly that, because it's a lot of information that could be placed there. A lot. It's a lot of information. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't like going there. You know, like I said, I, 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 li I like the evolution of things. I, I, I don't think that you... I, I kind of find it offensive that everything has to be gifted or given to us by the gods or aliens or anything. You know, it just greatly diminishes the genius of mankind. Right. I certainly, uh, I've heard that many times, right? <laughs> I totally get that. I, but then, see, the thing is, and I don't want to discount the genius of man because there's a lot of geniuses out there. And, gonna... and I don't want to discount the possibility of intervention. Uh, and you, and one can't, no, Be because when you start to look at other things in in history, and the obvious things are there, like the Sphinx or 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 Egypt or Peru and and some of the other megalithic structures that are around uh, Stonehenge. As much as that's been run in the ground, mm -hmm. is a fascinating case of how the heck did that happen? Because if it was, well, I mean, all kinds of parameters have been been put on that too you know it's and you have to understand like like the history of egypt you know when when egypt was first coming onto the radar to the 1800 18th century guys they didn't have our sciences you know what they had was the adventure of going down to egypt and discovering some and getting a trophy and taking it home and and telling some outrageous story about it right and for so long, that's what has been included in our history. And that is why history is changing by every discovery that we make, because we're, we're replacing these fantasies and made up stories of these adventurers who had no clue about Egypt with the reality that, that we're finding. Well, okay. And and this is why I'm so glad you're on the show, because you and I are just going to sit and go toe to toe. Let's do it. <laughs> Which is this. I totally agree with, um, uh, you know, when Napoleon and, and the French and you can even go back when the Persians, you know, first went to uh, visit Egypt and saw what they saw. They were perplexed, too. And you, and even uh, the ancient Greeks, 400 B.C., when they went to Egypt and started and, asking and questions. We're, we're still perplexed, too. We are uh, and, still perplexed. And back to back to my point, which is the the. Uh, the original theories of everything when it comes to Egypt, you know, slaves, uh, that's how it was done. They must have dragged the stuff with ropes across the desert for, you know, whatever. And, 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 then, you know. and there's been then uh, but, scientific research that shows that it can be done. And there's also scientific research today and engineers mm -hmm. with all of their technology today that look at Egypt and go, impossible. We couldn't do it today with today's technology. It would just absolutely be impossible. So we actually have both arguments being presented today. The more that we know, the less that we doubt, or the more that we doubt the uh, the dogma of of slaves and sleds and and uh, and putting this thing together in twenty years. That it's absolutely impossible. There's no way it could be done. It couldn't be done today. And why would we do it today? Why? Why? What's the the you know, this is the thing. And uh, I'm so glad we're discussing this. If you put the pyramids in modern terms as far as money work, right, that there's that aspect of it. There's no reason to do it. And that the other side of it is, why would you do it? Why? What is this? You know, why would you build such an important structure like that and put everything into it, all the resources of the country into this thing? For what purpose? What is the purpose? We don't know today, <laughs> and we and and certainly the Egyptians uh, two thousand years ago had no clue what those pyramids were were put there for. They didn't know. 
So that's that's the other part of it as we start to. Uh, yeah, but we all, we also put our, our understanding on them, and they didn't have our understanding. You know, they 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 certainly had a lot more time on their hands than we do now. I mean, we're we're so inundated with with information and and the need to make money and, and the whole rat race and all that. It wasn't like that back then. I mean, they they. Life was hard, but it wasn't like it is it is now. Well, and and if we look at it in those terms, um, and this is this is actually a pretty pretty fun conversation and debate, because when we look at it in those terms, most of when I say most of the majority of the big pyramids, those seventy five pyramids or, or thereabout, uh, done or twenty five pyramids done in a seventy five year period. 75 years. Everybody wants to focus on the Great Pyramid taking 20 years. There's three pyramids on the Giza Plateau. Right. Three. Okay? And and then you have just right there another 20. You have the Red Pyramid. You have the Step Pyramid. You've got all of these crazy large structures there. that And, that, and pyramids that they've deconstructed. Deconstructed and, and pyramids that are still yet to be discovered that are buried in sand. Yeah. So if we look at it in those terms and they say, well, you know, it took it took 20,000 workers, slaves, workers, 20 years to build. Well, OK, but what about the other pyramids that are there that were done in the same time period? Those resources, that quarrying, those moving, the feeding of those guys, the stones, the tools, the stone hammers, the the uh, the the copper chisels, the manpower, the sleds. That that's that's the part that uh, they choose to ignore. Well, they, I, I think that they had technology that we don't think that they did. You know, I think they had circular saws and the whole bit. You know, and there's been discoveries that oh look, this is this is where they cut the blocks. It's perfect for it. The water's going to it, and the, the wheels, and they've got. They've got blocks that are just so perfectly cut, and, and and they have saw marks on it. You know, like I said, we're starting to understand more because of the efforts of today's anthropologists and archaeologists and the discoveries that they're making. Yeah, the the alternative archaeologists, not the scholarly. Nobody's going to jump on that. It, it's it's pretty weird how they do not want to bend the rules when it comes to Egypt and, and being an Egyptologist. They they will not. They'll stick to what was written 100 years ago by some crazy Brit, and and that's what they stick to today. Let's take a quick yeah. break. Let's we're going to we're going to stay right on the subject. Don't don't you worry, Sid. We're going to stay right here. Um, but uh, and uh, I'm going to reset your audio, too, as well. So we'll get that done okay. and uh, and clean that up. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, talking to Sid Rice and his books, The Legacy of the Ages, the entire series. We're doing all of that tonight. This is History 101 on Fade to Black. We'll be right back. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRARadio.com. ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carzanel, tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. Attention CPAP users. Stop the insanity and torture of your CPAP mask. Don't you hate the skin irritation and terrible leaks? Jump on the CPAP Pro Train. Invented by an actual CPAP user that became so frustrated with CPAP masks. Are you ready to try something new? With absolutely no straps or headgear? Go to nomask.com and get the best night's sleep ever. Free to Medicare patients. Go to nomask.com. That's N-O-M-A-S-K dot com. 
If your home has hard water, then it's likely that lime scale is clogging your pipes, damaging your appliances, costing you hundreds of dollars each year. You can eliminate lime scale in the entire house with HydroCare products available at Wave Home Solutions. Easy and efficient with no maintenance, no salts, no chemicals, and no coils. And you can buy with confidence from Wave Home Solutions. Performance guaranteed. Just go to bestwater411.com. That's bestwater411.com. Calm. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Work with your doctor when taking medications. Make Protovite part of your healthy lifestyle. HealthForLiberty.com is your source for Protovite, a powerful nutritional supplement that's a true breakthrough for your health. Poor digestion makes it nearly impossible to absorb the nutrition your body needs. Protovite is a liquid multi-nutrient formula with patent-pending absorption technology and the highest quality ingredients to nourish every cell in your body. My name is Sandra White. Six weeks ago when I started taking Protovite, I was on 14 medications from everything for blood pressure to fibromyalgia. In the first 10 days, my blood sugar dropped 50 points and my fibromyalgia pain is gone. And so was 12 of the 14 medications that I was taking. I'm 66, living life and loving it. Go to healthforliberty.com right now. That's healthforliberty.com. Thank you, Protovite, for giving my life back. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Rhys Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. You can follow me on Twitter at jchurchradio. Email is jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. Tonight, we're talking to author and historian Sid Rice. And now, check this out, Sid. This is uh, now, I, I'm, I'm setting all of this up with intention so we can uh, possibly discover some things. Plus, you're going to need to rewrite some of this book, right? Oh, yeah. You, you oh, need to. Yeah. You need, so I'm going to help you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So, it, it, yeah. Uh, by the way, your audio is perfect. Good. Okay. All right. Oh, man. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay. Is this. This is this is the funky brain of Jimmy Church. Okay. Now, okay. I want everybody to just listen to me for a second. If we look at the Great Pyramid, and we know that there's two and a half million blocks on that thing, two and a half million. So let's do a little simple math. One copper chisel that weighs three pounds per block because they wear them out, right? They wear them out. That's it. There's no way, you know, it, they would need 10, but let's just go with one copper chisel per block at three pounds. So that means somewhere there is two and a half million copper chisels. I don't know where they're at, but they're somewhere. And not only that, but at three pounds each, we're looking at nine million pounds of copper somewhere. And nobody can change my mind on this. They, they were smelting and making these tools. And now, if you go with two and a half million blocks, then I see, go with me on this, Sid, two and a half million meals, food, mm -hmm. right? You got to have energy, right? Yep. Okay. Two and a half million meals. That's two and a half million fish heads, two and a half million cow bones. Where are they? Where's the garbage pit? Now, okay, if we okay. no, well, just stay with me on this for a second. Right. Okay, so that's the Great Pyramid. 
but there's another pyramid right behind it that is five feet shorter. <laughs> okay, it's the same size. Now everything doubles right there. So these extreme amounts of of stuff that I'm talking about, forget about everything else, the beds, the people, the this, it, it can go on and on and on and on and on. Okay, but all of that doubles the amount of tools, the amount of food, the amount of the, the you know, and and where is that? And then you can back it up again and go to the next, the third pyramid that is sitting on the Giza Plateau. Forget about the other twenty five that are sitting south, and a couple are sitting north. That the the where is all of this stuff? Therefore, this is where I'm connecting the dots. Everything is taught. Everything is taught. Everything comes from something before. I think that the Egyptians inherited those pyramids. You backed up the Sphinx, right, to mm -hmm. the age of Taurus. Mm -hmm. Pyramids could have... Uh, Leo, Leo. Uh, Leo. Um, and and uh, same thing with the pyramids, or possibly even before. Right. And you had talked about um, uh, tectonic changes and 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 bearing and 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 nature overtaking things mm -hmm. so if we back all of this stuff up all of that those things that i'm talking about would be there if it was four thousand years ago five thousand uh, twenty five hundred bc we would still find that stuff on the giza plateau it'd still be there but if it is fifty thousand years old and and everything was taught you know, that upright civilization going up to 3000 BC. Now we've got a whole nother situation that makes sense. What doesn't make sense is those pyramids being built at 2500 BC. That's what doesn't make sense. It just doesn't. It doesn't fit. It doesn't work. And if we back all of that up and 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 uh, all that stuff that I'm talking about would have been buried. You know, it's gone. It's dissolved after 100,000 years. It's it's now 50,000 years old and it's under 100 feet of dirt and sand instead right. of lying on the surface. That's why I kind of set you up for all of that. But that to me, that's where I'm coming from with all of this. What do you well, think? well, if you go back 50,000 years, then, then you have to include the possibility of Neanderthal mm -hmm. helping out, right? But I, I saw this, this, this study by an engineer who, who researched and thought about the construction, you know, modern-day methods and all that. And one of the questions he had was, all right, well, all these stones had to be car carved into these blocks, right? So where's all the chippings? Yes, I'm right. listening. Yes. So, so one of the things that that he proposes is that you, you can't find any of that stuff because the 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 pyramids are not block 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 upon block. You know, it, it's it's actually a whole lot of fill inside the pyramid. Garbage. Garbage. So maybe that's where all the used up bronze tools are, all the chippings are, etc. Possibility. I, I've, I've seen the same. I've seen the same research, mm -hmm. and uh, at which, which again, I, I think all all cards are on the table when it comes to uh, the uh, the Great Pyramid in Egypt, and that is certainly a fascinating way to go and look at it. Mm -hmm. They the the evidence uh, that that is today that we have been told is that it's block 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 block, right? And and, and to to do that this twenty year period, it, I I understand uh, a block would have to be quarried, moved, moved into place, shaped, and and done every two minutes, two and a half minutes by you know twenty thousand people over a a, a twenty year period. Um, it, now. Um, and there's no that 20 year period is only there for uh, a couple of different reasons. But we'll get back to that. That that idea doesn't make any sense. And the reason the, quite frankly, um, the reason why it doesn't make any sense is because it's it, it's an impossibility. That's why it, it's not that. Um, yeah, uh, but if, if 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 you reduce the number of blocks you know, that changes the formula also. Well, it, it certainly would. It and, certainly and, would. and each one of these pyramids were built by a different pharaoh. 
Well, okay. So let, now let me let me give you another example of why the twenty year period of building the what the like the most perfect structure that's ever been made. Mm-hmm. Let, let's not forget, not nothing has moved. The king's chamber in the Great Pyramid, all of those accurate measurements and how squared it it hasn't changed. It has not changed. It is the same today as it was when it was built, whenever that was. And that is a degree of precision that is, is it's ridiculous. It's stupid. Well, why but, but, Why would you do there's, it? There's cracks and flaws in, in, in the pyramid that they, they see in the chambers. I'm, I'm talking about the, the shape, the change, <clears throat> that it, it hasn't moved. Uh, everything oh, okay, I get it, it. has not moved. It has not moved. You still can't. Uh, all those blocks uh, is smooth. Everything is the seams. Everything is still exactly as those rocks were placed. Those haven't moved. Now, so if you take that, there is a quarry. There's a quarry in France, okay, that uh, I think it was salt. But there's a quarry in France, and they uh, uh, they dug it out, and they finished their quarrying <laughs> okay and 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 it's shaped like if you uh you know how quarries are you know it's kind of cone shaped right well if you take the great pyramid in in giza and you flip it upside down it will fit inside of this quarry flat do you understand what i'm saying okay right. it will fit they that quarry they went to go fill up full of garbage and rocks, okay? Not okay. build something, not make something perfect, not make something true north, not tr- totally level, not 50-ton red granite block king's chamber perfectly right. this with tunnels and not. No. All they did was fill it full of rocks to fill the quarry back up, okay? okay. 24 hours a day, 24 hours a day, Rocks in trucks and dump trucks filling up this quarry. Ten years. Ten years. And all they were doing was filling up a hole. So when somebody wants to tell me that they built the Great Pyramid, the most perfect structure that was earthquake proof and everything else with its precision, and they did all of that in 20 years, it, it's, it's uh, no, it didn't happen. It just didn't happen. Well, here's another factor: is, is you know, who's who who's saying that it was built in 20 years? You know, they, they, they could be wrong. Well, only just because, like a lot of the other older Egyptologists. Well, there was nothing nothing been written about it. The only reason why that that number has come uh, uh, to be accepted was because of the reign of Khufu. Okay, and when he died, mm-hmm. and when Seneferu started to build it. So, uh, 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 because, and Sinefri was building other pyramids at the same time, too, as well, and was completing those. That's right. what, that's where that 20 years comes from, because it had to be finished, uh, had to have been completed by the time that Khufu died. Right. That's where the 20 years comes from. It's not because it was written somewhere and they have documentation that that doesn't exist. Right. And, and, you know, so, but but do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Yeah, well, I, I get it. You know, it's a conundrum, and it's, it's a mystery that we're still trying to figure out. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. And, and hopefully one day some archaeologist will make this discovery that will, oh, there's the answer. You know, and I'm hoping for that because I want to put it in the book. Yeah, and well, why do you think um, historians try to fight, uh, you know, things like what I'm speaking about here? Why do they want to fight alternative thought? Because they're they're invested in it. They're, their whole career and their whole money making machine is is predicated on their theories. How did you tackle uh, ufology in these books as we start to get into – let's let's leave Egypt for a second. Let's get to okay. uh, uh, modern history. No, let's, let's start at World War II. Okay. Let's go there. How did you tackle ufology? Um, what do you mean? I mean, what I did was if, if there was something with a date on it and, and pictures and, and a story – I, I tried to include it, right? Just as as a matter of record, 
that uh, this UFO was seen on this day, et cetera, et cetera. Right? I'm not. I, I I'm not trying to make any kind of statements. I'm just trying to see how things fit together, and if it was reported, I put it in. Have you seen anything strange in the sky? Oh hell yeah! Exactly. Lots of times. And, and well, take me to one event really quick, because I want to expand on this thought with what is included in the book. What was your most extraordinary event? Um, when I went up uh, to visit my sister in Alaska, and we're driving around, beautiful, beautiful day in August, I think it was. Um, not like I expected Alaska to be at all, right? We're driving around in my brother-in-law's 68 convertible Camaro. You know, and, and we're driving down this road, and I'm looking up, and I see this chemtrail, just all by itself, no clouds, no nothing. And I'm looking at it going, oh, there's a chemtrail. And then I notice this little shimmery, shiny dot, you know, and I've seen these a lot in my life. And I call them mirror balls, right? So I'm, I'm, Keith, look, look, look at that. And he had his camera. He didn't have a zoom lens, but he has a telephoto lens. I said, take a picture of that. So he takes a picture of it, and we get home, and he puts it on his ginormous TV, which, which helps a lot in seeing it. And then he'd zoom in and zoom out, and we end up finding four UFOs in the picture, two of them that look like mirror balls and two of them that look like um, a traditional uh, spacecraft or UFO or – you know, I've even looked at it and pondered and looked at it and said, this kind of looks like a YF-22, a silhouette, kind of. It's got that shape going on with the big tails in the back. But my sister was a, was a pretty big mucky muck on, 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 on the base, and she called up, I think it's Elmendorf, and she called up you know, somebody that knows this stuff and asked if there were any planes up, and they said there were no planes up. So... Were they, were, they, were they causing the uh, chemtrails? No, it was like it was there. And, and, well, I don't know. They, they could have, but all I know is there's one that's kind of almost in the chemtrail and there's one that's above it. And the two other craft are um, on, the, on the top and the bottom of it too. So I, I didn't see the thing form. All I saw was the chemtrail there already. And these mirror balls, that's a very interesting description. I, I, I like that. How big do you think they were? I don't know. You know, my sister did a little research, and she said that in Vancouver, a couple of days either before or after, they had a sighting, right? And she actually brought up the picture of it, and it showed this, like, shiny, bright light on the front of it which, you know, could look, could look like the mirror ball. But once you get beyond it, there's a craft behind it, right? And, and the same thing in the picture. When, when my brother-in-law would zoom in, you'd see that there was something behind it, you know? Right. So it depended on the, your perspective and all that and, and depth of field. But, you know, I don't, I don't think they're just mirror balls. I think it's just a reflection that, where did these mirror balls uh, end up going to? Were you able to watch them for a while? Um, yeah, we watched it for probably a half hour or so. Oh, no kidding. Okay, yeah. so, so what happened? Where did they go? Did they go up and disappear? They just stayed. The, the ones that we saw were just, or the one that I saw was just stationary. That's why it was like, oh, you know, look, I've been looking at this for five, ten minutes, and I you know, look, and 20 minutes afterwards, it's still there. How far away was it? Oh, God, I don't know. I, I, I can't judge. It's, I don't know. A mile, two miles, close? I don't know. It's your typical camp trail distance, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be, what, 20,000, 30,000 feet? Yeah, maybe. Okay, that's it's interesting. And so when you see something like that, are you thinking us with some kind of crazy technology or are you thinking it was them? Yeah, it could be either or. I don't know. You know, it's, it's I, I, you know, I've 
followed ufology and all that stuff for a long time. So, you know, I know there's that possibility. I also know there's a possibility of back engineered stuff, et cetera. So I can't definitively say one way or the other. And is that how you treat it in, in the book, too, as well? Are you trying to stay as objective as possible? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it, a lot of this stuff, you know, some of this stuff it interests me, and that's why it's in there. But it, it doesn't really grab me. You know, it, 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 one, of the, one of the reasons I did this is for other people to be able to go in and look at it and glean what they glean from it. Well, okay. So then, uh, obviously, Roswell is something that you had to present. Right. Um, and uh, w you had to make some choices here. How did you choose to present it in the book? Um, the way of the UFO. I, I put it all in. I, the, the, uh, the conspiracy aspect of it, the, the just the bare facts. of I, I put everything there so that you know, there's a complete picture that you can draw from. It's not just, it's not just like I'm a Republican and I only want you to know this, or I'm a Democrat and I only want you to know this. It's all there. And well, and so with that, the reason why uh, I'm asking you directly is because you know you've seen something strange in the sky that you can't explain. Yeah. And then we have the government's version of of the UFO phenomena. We have two or three different versions, but let's just go with the one since 1947 that it's it's interesting, but w there's nothing going on. Well, there's there's also the, the aspect of uh, government disinformation and using the whole UFO thing as a cover up for their their technological developments like the SR-71. I mean, I include that in there also. How's, what do you mean by that? Do you think that there is some kind of ET technology in the SR-71 or skunk works? Not necessarily. I mean, I think that we could have come up with that ourselves. Yeah. But, but also think that, you know, if we did recover stuff, of course we're going to back engineer it and include it in our, our technology too. Yeah. And, and so and, – and now – when we talk with uh, uh, when we talk about UFOs in popular culture, and going from World War II until now, we have uh, we have the German technology that uh, that I, I think historically is there. We we still need to figure that out. Right. We have our side of it, and then we have ufology and popular culture going up through to today. Do you think that the popular culture side of it is is disinfo coming from the government back to us? Or do you think that it is what we are seeing in the skies and that that is accurate? Because I've seen my own things, too, just like yourself. Yeah, I think there's a lot of dis disinformation, but I, thought, I think there's a lot of, you know, the real UFOs. You know, the, the government is definitely propagandizing us and misdirecting us and oh look over there squirrel you know a lot of that's going on with the government uh, for whatever nefarious reasons they have what do you think uh, uh, right after the break we're, we're coming up to a break and I'm going to open up the phone lines for everybody and we'll do that so everybody get ready 323-825-5045 when when somebody reads this, uh, uh, well, if they, <laughs> if they read all of it, but what what do you want them to get out of this? What 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 uh, what are you hoping for? Oh, whatever they get out of it, I, I'm hoping that you know there's people that that can connect the dots in whatever their passion is and come up with a better understanding of whatever their subject is. And uh, OK, and, and really quick before uh, we do hit this break, I do want to talk about the 60s, probably. And this was actually brought up a couple of times over the last week, which is it's kind of bizarre that we're talking about it now. And that is uh, the 70s special time, 80s for me, uh, you know, a really special time. But if we look at uh, the 60s in general, what happened between 1960 and 1970, probably the greatest changes ever in the history of everything. Yeah, and that's, that's why I, I named the, the books The Awakening. 
uh, and and why do you think we made such dramatic strides, not only um, with technology, but also in the arts, uh, uh, in media? You know, things really, really changed uh, nearly day to day. Why do you think it was the 60s that that all of this happened so quickly? Hmm. Let me think about that and get back to the break. <laughs> <laughs> well, because um, and and I've I've spoken about this uh, loudly. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, night from 1900 to 1970, right? 1900 to 1970. Somebody that was born in 1900 uh, would have gone from uh, no automobiles, mm -hmm. right? That's Covered cool. wagons, gas lamps, electricity was just. You know, a New York was lit up, but but by and large, you went from that all the way to Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix in one lifetime. You saw uh, no planes to props to jets to, to space to space and walking on the moon all in one lifetime. You saw, uh, you know, no radio to radio to television, to black and white to color television stereos a transistor you, know, you saw everything in that short little 70 year period you just wrote you know a book that covers four and a half billion years but in that <laughs> in that 70 years everything seemed to happen all at the drop of a hat pretty remarkable yeah well i think it has to do a lot with the us having the infrastructure, us having the sciences and, and one thing building on each other and then you have the economy and competition and, and corporations putting money into research and development and it, it's, you know, the, the, the structure of our economy changed to allow for this stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah, and it, it, the, also there's a, there were a couple of singular guys too that were so oh, instrumental. Yeah. You know, Te Tesla, Tesla, Edison, Edison, uh, yeah. Marconi, uh, Henry, Einstein, Einstein, um, Henry Ford, all yeah. at the same time. These guys having these revelations uh, and the genius of mankind shining through. Well, I think it was divine. <laughs> I think it was divine intervention, man. I, I, I still think some DNA magic was involved. Um, could... And well, and then and and I, I talked about this last night on the show to have somebody like um, Jimi Hendrix rise out of and have his vision of things. When what did he have that thing to base it on? What I, it wasn't the Beatles, right? Yeah. It, it wasn't Elvis Presley, and and he just comes along like that uh, uh, overnight. Pretty. Well, I, I, I think I think that 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 we are we have so much to learn about DNA. You know, it is. Uh, I, I I have an example here. All right, I have a friend that is a genius musically. I have several friends that genius, but um, during his his productive years, he had children, and those children are blessed with musical ability, you know, perfect pitch, all that stuff. And I think that that because he was in that mode, you know, um, in, imbuing his DNA with music theory, knowledge, scales, or, you know, all that stuff that it, it's in the, it, that it gets stored in the DNA and, and then passed. You know, it's like I didn't have any children when I was musically active. And none of my kids are, are, are really into music or, or talented that way. They're talented in ways that, that, I was working it. Like my son, my my youngest son is just a computer genius. And, you know, it's I, I think that we pass this DNA down to our children. Interesting, totally interesting. But I'm I'm still going divine intervention. <laughs> this is fade to black. Opening up the phone lines right now. Three two three eight two five five zero four five. Three two three eight two five. Five zero four five. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Sid Rice. Be back after this short break. Oh, yeah.
Hi everybody, this is Rob Halford, the Metal Guard, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. KGRA Radio, Intelligent Talk. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Are you tired of brown rust stains on your toilets, sinks, and clothes? Does your water smell and taste bad? Don't live with these problems anymore. HydroCare's revolutionary well water systems, available at Wave Home Solutions, gives you clean, healthy, great-tasting water from every faucet. They remove iron, hydrogen sulfide, sediment, and many other contaminants that are distasteful and damaging your fixtures. You'll be amazed how fresh and clean well water can be. Satisfaction guaranteed. Go to bestwater123.com. That's bestwater123.com. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Fade or not, things are never what they seem. For the past century, forbidden subjects such as UFOs, backward engineering, human abductions, secret space programs, underground bases, suppressed free energy devices, and other fantastic notions have tested the human mind, forcing it to decipher fact from fiction, chronicling what he calls the alternative narrative. Author Brad Olson gets down to the middle of it all in his best selling book, Future Esoteric, now released in a second edition by CCC Publishing. And now you can get Future Esoteric at a special price, plus another free book by just using the promo code Jimmy when you check out. Just click on the Future Esoteric or CCC Publishing banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Go back, Lee Teppy. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. Welcome back to Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Sid Rice. His books. The Legacy of the Ages, Foundations, Volume 1 and 2, and Awakening, Volumes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Phone lines are open, 323-825-5045. Let's go straight to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hello? Yeah, you're live right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, my name, name is J.D. of Tulsa, and I was wondering if they've had any correlation between the Egyptian pyramids and the stone ruins of Machu Picchu down in Peru and in some other stone formations that are pronounced uh, basically sex a woman. We got about 11,000 feet in the air, and they say that even with today's modern machinery, they cannot figure out how they would put them together. And then they um, were put up to hold out like a fort. And the Spaniards tore them down looking for gold because they're still standing this day and have survived earthquakes for centuries. Yeah, absolutely. Like, absolutely. What was your name? 
JD in Tulsa. Hey, JD in Tulsa. Thank you so much for the phone call and an absolutely brilliant question. Thank you so much, JD. What, Glenn, what about that when you're looking at all of these megalithic structures uh, like not only Machu Picchu, but Peru and, and Bolivia, uh, Mexico, uh, to, to throw in China for that matter, and going back to Egypt, the similarities that you have between these different structures that, uh, that are separated by oceans? Well, I'm, I, I've seen things, theories about well, these are basic basic shapes, and and naturally that that we would build in this this manner. Um, as far as moving these humongous stones, um, in, in the South Americas, uh, the cultures they they didn't use the massive blocks. They actually, well, they did. There's there are some, but for the most part, they're they're dealable by human means. You know. So, uh, I don't. I don't know. Uh, to, to be honest with you, it's, it's one of the things that I haven't really looked into too deeply because there's other things that. Well, when you look yeah. at when you're looking at uh, the dating of these, and you're putting together these books, and you're seeing mm -hmm. these same structures appearing, uh, uh, you know, remember these cultures didn't talk with each other. Right. You know, they, they just didn't. But yet the similarities uh, in some of these uh, carvings and how they were done asymmetrically, um, but still fit. And, and, and look at uh, Puma Punku is another classic example. Uh, but the, well, the, well, there, there is work done that, sa that, that says that, yeah, we did. We were able to travel to these distant continents and, and that they actually did. At, at, in what time period, though? I mean, um, are, are you suggesting that the ancient Egyptians sailed to South America? Yeah, I've seen uh, I've seen studies on that. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I've seen studies. <laughs> I yeah. would like to think. Look, if that actually uh, did occur, it would answer a lot of questions. Certainly, there it seems to be Sumerian texts that have that has shown up in South America. I've seen evidence of that. And and what an and, and and plant life and, and and fruit and all that stuff, yeah. Um, I I wanted to jump ahead uh, to today. Um, <laughs> what, and well, we started to talk about World War Two, right? And the uh, that war, which was five years, nineteen forty thirty nine forty to nineteen forty five. That's a five-year, uh, uh, you know, a world war where everything is is there. And then we have uh, the Iraq War and the occupation that we've had in the Middle East since 1991. Are you going to treat that as a 25, 30-year war that hasn't ended yet? Yep. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I, sometimes I wish that I, I was up to date with my work. Right, so that I'd be on top of all of that, but I, I, I also think that I'm glad I'm not doing it now because it, by the time that I get to it, there'll there'll be all kinds of, of things proving out, running out, and, and and you can look back in hindsight and and you know have a better perspective. You know, right now I think if if I was doing that, I. Oh, God, I can't even watch it now. Well, yeah, there's that. And then you have, you know, World War II is five years. You know, yeah. uh, uh, World War I, uh, the American Revolution. Everything can be dated, right? Everything is dated. Mm -hmm. Everything is a starting and ending point. Right now, uh, do we call the war in the Middle East, you know, starting in 1991 and, and then have an asterisk next to it because it hasn't ended yet? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hi, Jimmy. This is Mark from Oregon. Hi, Sid. Hey, how you doing? Good. Um, I wanted to ask you if you were familiar, Sid, with the cuneiform tablets uh, of Chief Joseph. And then my other question is, are you familiar with the dog bone shaped uh, copper clamps that were used to hold stonework together? On uh, on many different continents. Yeah, vaguely. Yeah, I, I've I've seen 
specials on on this, and it, it is fascinating that that they're using engineering techniques that we use today still. And and what about uh, Chief Joseph? Not that familiar to be able to talk about it. Okay, Mark, why would you ask him about both Chief Joseph and the uh, uh, the metal ties uh, for megalithic structures? Well, be because I think that both are really good evidence for uh, very, very old uh, transatlantic, transpacific crossings mm -hmm. by ancient yeah. culture. Yeah, and we're with the Clovis points and, and all that stuff too. Absolutely, and and uh, Chief Joseph, when, when he was captured, he had that tablet, very small cuneiform tablet, in his medicine bag, and it's here in Oregon in a museum. But he said that it had been passed down in his family for from his grandfather's grandfather's grandfather. Do, do, do you know what the tablets say? Um, no, I, I haven't seen a translation of that tablet. I know that most of the tablets have to do with accounting and, and business transactions. Right, right. But also there's about 20 different uh, dialects of, of uh, cuneiform writing from the Mideast. They're not all the same, and you really need, almost need something else to go on before you could start. I have several books on deciphering cuneiform, mm -hmm. but you, you'd really need a little more of a hint about where it came from, what region it came from. Yeah, and like I said, nothing exists in the vacuum, so you also have to, to find the connections to everything else, you know, economy, everything that's connected to them being able to write their, their, their marketing, all that stuff. And Well, there, there is something to be said, Sid, don't you think? When If these cultures are all using copper clamps, then they have to be sourcing copper and, and possibly even trading copper across mm -hmm. the ocean. Oh, yeah. And, and we're, we are great traders. You know, we're, we're discovering that more and more. And especially with, with the new uh, satellite um, imaging that we have with the infrared, they're finding all kinds of roads and trails and cities. And, and it's just astounding what they're being able to find with, with the the satellite technology and and what what they're going to be able to discover when they go in and excavate these places, are, I, I think, will be mind boggling. I do too. Yeah. Um, can, oh, yeah. Go ahead, Mark. You, yeah. Go ahead. Can I ask Sid one more question? Sure. sure. Could could you maybe tell us? I, I mean, you studied a great deal to study history to to write these two compendiums of history. What what was really the most amazing thing that really struck you or impacted you the most? And I'll take my answer off the air. Uh, thank you, Mark. Oh, thank you. Oh, my God. Out of all those books, oh, my. I don't know, the, the, the mysteries of the pyramids and, 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 and the Sphinx is, is to me, mind-boggling. You know, I, I'd like to wrap my head around on exactly how they were built, when they were built, all that stuff, because... If you had a time machine, is that what you would do? Would you go straight to Giza? Yeah. I'd, oh, God, I'd love to see that place in its prime. I mean, it's, it's got to be stupendously beautiful. Yeah. not Well, there's that part of it because it was uh, probably green and lush and cultivated and together mm -hmm. and, and watered down and... You know, today limestone, shiny limestone, right. and it's gold, and it's just, oh my yeah, and God. the capstones, and 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 the, the clothes, colors. and the people, and the, and the artisans, and uh, it, yeah, it just meant, it must have been an amazing time uh, because they were so creative too, as well. Uh, you know, that long ago to do that kind of fine art and sculpture, uh, their appreciation of the arts and what was really going on on a mm -hmm. conscious level just must have been incredible back then oh so now um uh okay next how um how did you treat uh 9 11 and would you update the way that you treated 9 11 what do you mean update uh, do, is your opinion different today and the way that uh, uh, different researchers out there have presented their evidence, how um, some of the mechanics, yeah, have changed. You know, the, the mechanics of, of the building falling and all that stuff, yeah. 
But as far as the conspiratorial aspect of it, no, I, I treat it the same. So it was just a, a bunch of guys hijacking planes. Oh, it's more than that. Okay. It's more than that. Okay. Um, we'll get back to that in a second. I actually want to play a track. And, that's the game in American and this is Sid Rice. Everybody listen to this. And you just fell for the trap. Simply stated, there is no doubt that Saddam Hussein now has weapons of mass destruction. There is no doubt that he is amassing them to use against our friends, against their allies, against us. I don't know where he is. 
I, uh, I, 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 I repeat what I said. I truly am not that concerned about him. Let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. I'm not a crook. Sid, Sid, Sid. All right. Now, we have, well, I'm going to get to the track in a second, but here we have uh, your books that are written on fact, right? Not conjecture. That's the way that you've done it. Then we have, uh, that's why I saved this track for last for everybody, because this track obviously states question everything. Right. Reality is not what we think that it is. Things are not what they seem. Is that what is in this track? Oh, yeah. You get it. Yeah. But first, credit where credit is due. OK, this is not my song. I, I, I partnered with a guy named William Penn who was touched by God musically. Just astounding. Right. And he used he was in another band called Zealot. And, and they'd written a track, they recorded a track that was real hollow and empty. So when Bill and I got together, we took it and he added all kinds of leads and strings and all that kind of stuff. And still, it just felt still kind of missing something. So I had to brainstorm of, of you know what? It, it was during a time of political turmoil and, and I was really upset about all things. So I said, well, I'm going to put all these presidential quotes in there, you know, to, and they fit so perfectly. I, I'd place them and I wouldn't have to move them. It was so uh, astounding to me. And you know, musically, I'm not really on, on, on the tune. I just produced it and added all the presidential quotes in it you know so kudos to tommy the singer and zealot the band and bill for his brilliant lead work why do you why do you why do you feel the need to present the uh the conspiracy side of things as you're you know you're a documentarian you're a historian you put these books together and then you I, it, did it cause you, as you're looking at all of this history, to start to do just that, to question everything and and uh, history as as the media is presenting itself through these presidential quotes? Um, it is is not what we are being told. Well, I'm a child of the '60s and '70s, so I questioned anything, everything, anyway. Right. And, and and do you think that that is what's going on today? I mean, you're going to have to go back and, and, and update these books. Yeah. How, you know, how are you going to do that? Because you you now have a belief system in place. And are, are you going to print a I, I, lie? I think that the conspiracy stuff is becoming more and more obvious and prevalent. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think that most people realize that this election is all about corporations and corporate rule. And, and both candidates pretty much represent the final nail in the coffin of democracy. Is that is that where you think it's 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 headed? Yeah, I, I think we were things are, are moving towards a corporate state. With um, when we look at all of the great civilizations, you know, one would have never thought that the Roman Empire would come to an end, right? Right. Well, the it Greeks exploded within itself. Well, is 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 that where we are today? I think so. How, it, There's so much corruption and disinformation, and you know, we swim in in bullshit. You know, I'm sorry to say that, but. We swim in it, and uh, well, uh, exactly. And and how how are you going to compile 
this is where we have a problem here. We have what needs to be documented as the real truth, but how do we get to the truth now? It's different historically when you can go back 100 years or 50 years or 200 years and, and compile stuff and, and go back to the historical record. Today, well, and, that, and that's why I'm glad I'm not in it now. It'll probably be another 5, 10 years before I get there. Right. Well, so, but how are you going to go about it, Sid? Um, well, I just present everything the way I have. You know, I'm going to present the, 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 the given story and, and all the factual dates and all that stuff. And I'm also going to present all the conspiracy theories because it's, it's what's going on. Do you I think, have to do it. So you're suggesting that conspiracy is the new normal? God, I hope not. <laughs> well, uh, and I'll give you I'll give you a, a, a really, really classic example. We have if we go back to 2003 and we go back to Bush and the reasons why we invaded Iraq, we have his stuff that mm -hmm. he stated publicly that are in this song. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Colin Powell. Right. Mm -hmm. We have that. And then we have what we now know is the truth that there was no WMDs. It was it was a complete farce. It was a lie. But we don't know the real reasons for the invasion. Was it money? Was it corporate greed? Was it him getting paying back I, I think I think it was is is the way to destabilize the world so that they can they can bring about the economic collapse that they so desperately want so that they could bring on the one one money system and push the reset and go from there. And you know it's um it's 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 funny how we kind of have to come down to that and look at things that way. But when you go and you write the books that you've done and you see history as it's presented, and now we're coming up to this 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 radical point in our history mm -hmm. that this could be uh, uh, the end of the book for you. Oh God. <laughs> You know, I wanted the end of the book to be the year 2000. I thought, oh, you know, I'll stop at the millennium. That's a good stopping point. But things started happening that were saying to me that, oh, all this stuff that happened before w w is culminating in what's going on now. So I have to include now. Right, right. Well, I can't, I, you know, I can't wait uh, till the next volume comes out. And I'm still, just to let the audience know, I have read most of uh, uh, volume one in Foundations and most of uh, volume one in Awakening, but I haven't read the complete thing. It would take me years to so, do. And, and you notice that, that the closer we get to now, there's so much more information. I go from uh, you know, a million years apart, you know, 100,000 years, 50,000 years, to, oh, at, at noon uh, on this day, this happened, and at 2 o'clock that same day, this happened. You know, it's, there's so much information, and, and the volumes, the closer we get to now, just increase. Yes, know? exactly. I, I, don't, I don't know how you do it. I, I really don't. Thank you so much, Sid. And uh, be safe out there, and let's get this stuff published. Well, thank you very much. It's been an honor speaking with you, Jimmy. <laughs> thank you so much, Glenn. Oh, I said Glenn. Sid. <laughs> I, I just did it. Uh, that was a... <laughs> it's all good. It's <laughs> behave, all... behave and be well. You too, man. All right. That was Sid Rice. And you know what? Oddly enough, oddly enough, right now, Let's see if I can make this happen. Oh, you're not, you're, this, this is not happening. I'm going to try this one more time. Let's see if I can make this happen. It, 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 my audio crashed just like that, but I got it back. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Sid Rice, Legacy of the Ages. Absolutely incredible. This is Fade to Black. I'm going to open up the phone lines and get to all of the news that you know nothing about right after this short break. 323-825-5045. And, and sorry for everybody that was on hold, but I had to wrap. I had to wrap this in the correct way. I'll be right back. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your girl, 
Vivica Fox here, and you are listening to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. Does your basement or crawl space have a damp, musty smell? Well, watch out. That's a sign of too much moisture and not enough ventilation. And that can mean increased mold growth and the buildup of harmful toxins and gases. Don't bother with a dehumidifier. It just circulates the same unhealthy air. Now there's a better way to remove these dangers and odors. It's with the computerized Wave Moisture Control Unit that reduces moisture and expels pollutants. We replaced our old dehumidifier with the Wave Unit, and in only three weeks, our basement is dry and the musty smell is gone. Wave units require no maintenance, no buckets of water or filters, and costs only pennies a day to run. Breathe better, live healthier with an affordable, no maintenance Wave unit. Call 888-618-WAVE 888-618-WAVE or visit MyDryHome.com MyDryHome.com Ride the wave Wave home solutions for a healthy, comfortable home What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dum loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full-range boomboxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this. It's amazing. It's just $129, and use the promo code JCRTWS, and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go back, Lee Tepe. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Oh, wow. (laughs) That was trippy. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm back. Fade to black. Thank you, Sid Rice. And amazing conversation when it comes to history. And I, uh, and, and looking at his books, I, the, the first time that I flipped open the page, I was like, this is exactly what I enjoy uh, to read. I, li- I, just, I, I like that documentary stuff. I like nonfiction. I like the facts. And, the, and 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 this goes in order, and it just stirs the mind. Every time you look at a date, you look at this event, and you look at uh, the pictures and, and how it's represented there, I just go straight to it, and it stirs the mind. And the one thing that um, that I came away with uh, in, in reading Sid's stuff is that I'm right. There's something going on here. There's too many holes. Um, he's got everything there. It's all there. And you start to stop and 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 think about things. I keep going back to one basic thing and and I I can't escape this in my mind. We only know about us today. That's it. That's it. That's all we know. That's all we know. Everything else is is empty. Right? And if you take, if you take, uh, and I've, I've, I've had you do this before today, uh, before on the show, which is if you take four and a half billion years and you go from one side of your room to, you know, from the left to the right, and you look at that, whatever your room is, it's a 10 foot room and you picture yourself in front of you four and a half billion years, right? We, if you go all the way over to the right and you look at the thickness of the paint on the wall. The thickness of the paint, that is us. That's, 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 
that's 100,000 years. That's 2,000 years. If you go to the last 100 years, we're talking about molecules that you would scrape on the wall. That, it's that thickness. And if you look at that 4.5 billion years in front of you, you could take that slice of paint off the wall the last 2,000 years, 5,000. Pick a number. And you could you can just put that in that timeline anywhere. There's no telling how many times civilizations have come and gone. We don't know. And anybody that says that today this, this version of us is the only one that ever was is, is full of it. They don't know. They quite simply don't. And that's where I, I, I just I, I know in my, in my soul, in my very being, that knowledge has been passed down to us today from the past the far past, really distant past, through a lot of different methods, a lot of different things. Could be, it could be genetic. It could be in our DNA that could have been placed there. Not necessarily from ET. How about just uh, a version of us that was that was around for a million years? Not you know, not this last hundred fifty thousand year stuff. Think about that. That's where this genius comes from, and it just pops up today. It has to be. It just has to be that way. I want to thank Sid for coming on. His books are absolutely incredible. And uh, I hope that all of you one day can can check these out. Uh, the, the knowledge and the way that it's presented, it's absolutely extraordinary. I'm not, I'm not joking or, or being light about this at all. The books are absolutely incredible. All right, let's get to, uh, oh, I just opened up the phone lines, by the way. That's what I was doing. That's why audio dropped. 323-825-5045. 323-825-5045. I do want to remind everybody, tomorrow night, Chuck Zukowski is going to be here with Ben Mesrich, author Ben Mesrich, tomorrow night here on Fade to Black. Now, all the news that you know nothing about, Russian computer hackers penetrated the world anti-doping agency's athlete database and publicly revealed private medical information about Serena Williams, Venus Williams, and Simone Biles, and that the three received medical exemptions to use banned drugs. Yes. And <laughs> the anti-doping agency actually confirmed the authenticity of the documents in a statement released today, attributing the hack to the Russian cyber espionage group called the Czar Team, also known as Fancy Bear. I don't know if you guys heard. Um, I, I haven't commented on this, but the Russian... <laughs> Paralympic team also uh, was banned from the Olympics and for uh, for doping. And I just had to stop and ask myself, why, why would you, why would you test a Paralympian of any sort for drugs? <laughs> why? If I've got no legs and and how I got to the no leg status is 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 bad. And I'm in a wheelchair. I am taking drugs. Right? I'm taking drugs. So why would you tell as a matter of fact, and I really, really mean this, caller, stay stay right there. I'll bring you in in, in just a second. If I, I, aren't I entitled to take drugs of any kind? <laughs> I'm being serious here. It doesn't matter what they are. What are you doing testing me for drugs? I'm in a wheelchair. I'm a Paralympian. What are you testing me for drugs for? I'm taking drugs. I'm taking all kinds of drugs. I'm taking pain medication. I'm taking steroids. I'm taking... Uh, blood medication, I'm taking heart medication, I'm taking all kinds of things, and I'm entitled. What are you doing testing me? Of course. You want to, I've got so many drugs in my body. What do you want to know about? I'll give you the list. What are they doing banning 
and and I, I just don't get it. And I was completely offended by it. And uh, of course, you're going to find something in all of them. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hey, Jimmy, it's Eric. Oh, hey, Eric, how you doing? Good, buddy. Hey, I, you've been talking about uh, the show that you're filming, right? The uh, on, on the History Channel. A little bit, yeah. Are, are you? I'm just apologize for being so anxious. I'm just dying to know. Can you tell us anything about what when it's going to happen and what it's anything? Ah, uh, anything. Just some little something. Okay. Um, okay. Let me. I, I, I'll say. I'll say what I can. Okay. And it, yeah. it's this. Now, just please remember that I'm contractually bound to A&E and History Channel. Okay? So, okay. and they have a marketing department, and they have a way of doing things, and it's their show, right? It's not my show, right? So, th therefore, when they are ready to do the marketing and, and go and, and launch this and make the announcements, then I can freely say whatever I want to say and 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 stuff. So that being said, I will say in a general sense of, 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 of what's going on, we are, I'm going to say the things that I don't think they're going to mind me saying, okay? Uh, we are 99% done shooting, okay? I'll, I, I can say that much. Uh, and that is for this round uh, not this season, but this round of stuff. Um, how many episodes and stuff? I, I really can't say, but it's it's your typical uh, 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 group of shows. I can't really say how many or, or whatever, but let's say it's somewhere. Is it likely to be like a once a week likely or you can't say? Oh, no, no. It's definitely going to be that. Okay. okay. It's, it's definitely going to be that. And that's what we're shooting for. Um, I will say this. I'm the host of the show. Okay, uh, I'll go that far. Um, but what the show is about, um, the show, uh, it, it's me. It, it's the things that I speak about. Okay, so, and, and where it goes beyond there, we've got some really, really, really cool things that, uh, uh, that myself and the show and the staff and the producers and the writers, uh, it's a big team that is involved. Uh, we have been shooting all around the country, um, uh, myself included, and it's uh, it, it's we've taken great care to present uh, uh, information and and research that hasn't been done before, and that is it's a difficult thing to do to make sure that it is it's current, it's groundbreaking, it's it's uh, educational, it's mind blowing. And it's done and presented in a way that has never been done before. Okay, so it's, it's li likely to come out this year sometime. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, if okay. I if I had my crystal ball, we don't have an air date yet. Okay, we don't have an air date yet, but uh, we're still looking at again. Oh, man, I'll say this: late October. There, I said it. Late October. Beautiful. Late October, and and that's if. Everything, you know, we just did uh, last weekend, we went out and did some more shooting, some pickup shots and stuff to uh, to fit all the pieces of the puzzle together. The look um, and the way that it is done, the the directors, um, it's it's extraordinary. You're going to you're going to see this and you go, man, wow. So it's very cinematic. It's it, it's big. Um, everything that is done on this show has been caught on camera. Um, there isn't any conjecture here. There isn't any hypothesis. Everything has a beginning it. and an ending to it. And we, so uh, it's bigger than the time travel show you did recently. It sounds like it's much bigger than that. Well, um, that was, uh, that, that was an interesting concept. I mean, that's already aired. So I, I'll speak about that briefly. Um, that time travel show was, uh, ambitious and I like the concept of it, and and uh, I was able to uh, 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 speak exactly how I felt about it, and they didn't uh, they didn't edit me weird or anything. So all of my ideas and theories were presented as I presented them. 
um, and it was it was really good. There is a lot of stuff uh, that uh, didn't air in that show. So uh, is there going to be more? I don't know. You know, um, that I, I just honestly don't know. I thought the show was fun and I thought it was, it was. I, th I thought it was fun. It was cool. Um, but uh, this next thing is not that it's it's not even it's done with a whole nother set of eyes and mindset and uh, ideas for presentation. And I know I'm I'm being weird and I'm not being. No, you're not. I, I feel what you're saying. But I, I can't go farther than that. I'll just get in trouble, right? So, Are you allowed to say is it the same group of people that work with you on the time travel show that you're no, working no, with? No, 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 okay. no, no. But that I can't speak about. That is all up to, uh, that's all up to the network. But I'll, okay, say, no I'll, I'll say this, that um, uh, History Channel and the people that are involved with this new show, um, have been so cool and so conscious about being groundbreaking and different and and having something that is bigger than life. And that's a very ambitious thing to do. It is, and it's hard. And so when you're when you're set up with that set of challenges to do something different, do something big and and have scope and have meaning to do all of that and and actually pull it off. Uh, and, and, and I think we're there, man. I really, really do. I, I just step back and I, I look at this and, and, uh, the people that are involved, I'm just like blown away. I'm blown away. So, but it, awesome. it, it, it's different. And that's the thing. It's different. It's never been done like this in this fashion before. And I can't wait, man. I, look, I cannot wait for everybody to see it. I just can't. I can't wait either. That's why I'm calling and talking to you about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm and, living through you right now. <laughs> well, see, this is the thing is I've never spoken about it. This is the most I've ever talked about it. Um, uh, and, and again, I'm, I know I'm being evasive and stuff. I wish I could say more. I just can't. Uh, but when I can and, 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 uh, uh, we can discuss the shows in depth and who's, you know, and, uh, you know, on this show, it, it's going to be great, I, and I can't wait. Awesome. So there you go. All right, well, hey, okay. thanks for sharing that, Jimmy. I, at least I got something to look forward to maybe in a month or two for sure. So Yeah, we've been working really, 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 really hard on this. Okay, we've been uh, – if I told you when we started and, and where we are today and how long it's been and, and how much work has gone into it, you will see when the show – you know, when we start, you know, taking off and airing this – you can understand why it took so long and well, not that long, but, but why, uh, things had to be correct and, and stuff. And I think they will be. Beautiful. Awesome. Jimmy. Well, I'll get off the phone for somebody else. Good talking to you. I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Yeah. Thank you so much, Eric. Hi, you're All live. Right, care, yep. Thank you, Eric. Hi, you're live on fade to black. Hey, Jimmy. How are you, buddy? Yeah, I'm doing good. Who's this? This is captain. Hey captain. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Listen, I need to uh, tell you and your audience that uh, uh, we're in a time when it's called stasis. Do you understand what stasis is? I, I think you're going to help me. Okay. What I'm saying is that everything is under synchronicity, meaning that every time you look up, it's either 11 11 or or uh, 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 222 or 333, everything is in sync. We're in a uh, situation where we're going to what is called interstellar dimensions right now. The Earth is going through this uh, pattern. And I'm going to give you a good example. Uh, uh, yesterday, I laid a pen, an ink pen, on the kitchen table. I came back 10 minutes later, it was it was missing. So I said, where the heck did I put that pen at? I knew I placed it on the, on the kitchen table. I couldn't find it anywhere. I thought it was on the floor, or it rolled over, or I fall off the table. I couldn't find it nowhere. 10 minutes later, I came back, there it was. No. So, yes, I'm telling you the truth. We are traveling through dimensions right now. Uh, I'm taking that we're in the fifth, sixth, and possibly the 
the seventh dimension right now. I Chicago, think I think your roommate took you on a fifth dimension. <laughs> what do you? What do you <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, listen. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, there's a lot that's going on on the planet. Look what's happened to look what's happened to our son. Our son is acting erratic right now because of Nibiru. Nibiru is in the vicinity right now, and it, it is causing a electrical magnetic uh, situation on the planet. That means we're going in and out of uh, 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 interstellar dimensions. That's what's happening on this planet. So, Do you think you uh, think that's what caused the uh, pen to disappear and reappear in your kitchen? Yes, yes, yes. Because we're going through that the status right now. What about my car keys that I lost earlier today? You'll find them. <laughs> you'll find, I, they were real quick. Listen to me. Okay, I, I'm you know, listening. I guarantee you, you're going to come back on the show tomorrow night and say, Catherine, you were absolutely right. I found them. And uh, this is crazy. But I'm telling you, little bit of items are missing, and they reappear again. I'm telling you. If you get a number of person come on the show and they say these things to you, it is happening. It is really happening because it happened to me. That's how I know that, that we're going through these uh, interstellar dimensional changes right now. That's uh, how, how did that make you feel when you walked back in and, and saw the pen where you absolutely positively did not see it a few minutes before that? And you're 100% on this, Captain. You're 100%. I am. I am a, a thousand percent on this, Jimmy. Well, the thing is this here. You know, there's a lot of things uh, I cannot explain. Uh, but, you know, when we go, when a person says, uh, I have uh, traveled to a certain distance, and think about it, how can you prove that? How can you prove it? You really can't. But you know you, been, you, know you have missing time. That's what happened to me. I have traveled to time, and I, I have traveled to mission time. And I said, how in the heck did I get here? And what happened to me? And I cannot explain it. But there's a lot that's going on on this planet that people are very much aware of, but they don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I think uh, I think uh, we're we're headed towards something. I'm not I'm not sure. I mean, the chaos. Uh, we were talking about uh, ancient Egypt on the show tonight uh, a lot. And, you know, the whole thing about ancient Egypt was, you know, trying to get order out of chaos. Right. And not and right. And, and, and right now we're in the opposite of that. Man, we're going from uh, from order to chaos and trying to get back to order. Um, and we're right there. It, it, things are so chaotic, uh, not only here. Um, in the United States, and not only in the world, but it's 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 on the individual level. You know, it's in, exactly right. It's and on you the, know what, Jeff? Uh, a good example. Here's a good example. We're coming out of the Piscean, the Piscean age, which is the masculine, and we're going into the age of Aquarius, which is the feminine. And what's happening right now is this: we are definitely. Uh, on the verge of history being made. Uh, you, know, you talk about leadership. So look what's happening with the, with the elections. I'm predicting this, and I'm just telling you this right now. I'm predicting that we will not see the election this coming November because of the situation with Hillary and the situation with Donald Trump. I also believe that uh, something is definitely going to happen um, so you're saying, see, are you saying Obama's going to stay in power? I'm saying uh, President Obama is going to serve a third term, and the simple reason for serving that third term is because of what's happening with Hillary. And uh, some, some, some other things that have come out about Donald Trump, and I think that's going to cancel the, uh, the election in November and uh, President Obama will indeed serve a third term. There have been uh, a, a emergency broadcasting uh, testing been done throughout the entire country all last week. I don't know. I don't know if you've been noticing that. I've been noticing that lately 
They've been doing it lately, all last week, and they are preparing us for something to happen to now and to the end of this month. All right. Well, you know, like I've said to you before, Captain, uh, if something goes down, we'll always be able to go back and historically look at uh, and listen to your your calls and predictions into the show. And and hopefully, hopefully you're wrong. Right. That's the point. <laughs> you don't want to be the right guy here. And uh, and thank you so much, Captain, for the phone call, man. And, and be safe out there. All right. Well, thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. Um, when I talk about chaos, listen to me for a second and, and listen to me really clear. The cell phone and the access to data and tablets and digital streams around us have now the the freedom of the untethered uh, world that we used to live in. If you went to work, you went to work. You didn't worry. You weren't checking on your bank statements all day long. You weren't looking for posts on Facebook. You weren't checking your email. You weren't looking at Instagram, right? You weren't streaming videos from Hulu and ESPN into your cubicle or, or watching uh, updates on Twitter while you're driving home in the car and and and, and, and updates and this and, new, and that, blah, blah, blah. Now you have access to your everyday life at, by the second, and that is chaos. You're not able to keep your mind focused in one direction at all ever. Now you walk around with a cell phone at your hip where you are distracted at the, any given moment with a text, with a phone call, picking it up. You got to call somebody. You got to pick it up. You got to do, you know. It, it, the the simple fact that you didn't have to do that unless you went to a pay phone and you had to make the effort of putting a quarter into the pay phone and, and having the phone number that you need to call either in your brain or written down on a piece of paper, that took a lot of effort. So therefore, you were never distracted with that. To check your bank statement you had to go to an ATM and pop in your card and print out a, you remember those, those days printing, printing out a summary, right? And, and before ATMs, before 1980, 81, 82, you didn't even have that ability. Call into a bank, <laughs> give them your, your checking account number that you had to have written down. You had to have your checkbook with you to do that. Now everything is constant information on anything that you want or need, or somebody's going to bother you with that information all day long. Going to the internet and CNN and Google this and Google, it's 24-7, it's, it's, it's never stops. That chaos is what I'm talking about at the individual level. And that goes to news and streaming events and your, and your timeline in Facebook. And, and looking for friend requests and following up on it's it's abs you cannot focus on anything at all ever it's impossible and throwing cell phones away and going back to the dark ages going back to 1990 ain't gonna happen and that's the chaos that I'm talking about and we've caused it ourselves audio that's chaos technology that's exactly what I'm talking about. Faded Blocks is executive producers. Rita Kamari on shows produced by Hill J. Paul, Mark D. Kovar, LJ3, Renee, Mark Dunbar, Jonas. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Bob. Announces are Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kovar. Fady by Dale. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy, SpaceboyMusic.com. Faded Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network syndication. KGRA, The Planet. Thank you to everybody that called in tonight. Thank you, Sid Rice. This broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2016 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. You can follow me on Twitter at Church Radio. Everybody be safe. Go back, Lee Tappy.